Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Saints game day. And today, it's the playoffs. But it's not just any regular game day. It's not just any regular Saints playoff game day. We have three games on display here today. So we're going to do, be doing our typical game day format. Once again, I'm your host for today, Matthias, also known as Mothias, and I'm joined by Patrick Smoke Chambers. How you doing? I'm feeling really, really good right now, Matthias. You know, it's nice to be back. Haven't been here for a little bit, but, you know, <laughs> we're back now, and that's all that matters. And I can't wait to get into some of this nice playoffs. I mean, for just everything, honestly. Tis the season for the nice playoffs, and, you know, no better, uh, no better way to be here. Exactly. No better way, and there's no better matches coming out today except for right here. So let's get started by going through them. So we have two matches happening at 7 today. Everything, I believe, is NACE as well, NACE Star League playoffs. So starting off, we're going to be having a League of Legends. It's going to be our Saints varsity team up against Oklahoma, Oklahoma Christian University. The Saints went flawless in the re regular season, going 6-0. and oh. And you'd think they'd be at the top. They're ranked first, right? But it's actually a tie for first against Oklahoma Christian. So now it's going to be a battle to see who really was the best of that division. Right. And I mean, you know, both teams have just been doing so well over the season. You can't get better than flawless. So exactly. Clash of the Titans, Matthias, take us through our next two matches as well. What do we got going on on the Overwatch side of things? Well, on the side of Overwatch, we're going to be starting off another, our other 7 p.m. game is going to be up against the uh, St. Clair Academy team is going to be going up against University of Missouri at Mizzou Esports. I'm sure you've heard of them. You've seen them play. They're one of the best teams around. And the Saints are coming off of a direct loss, finishing off the regular season. Season five and two, still a very good record, but I believe they've placed third overall. As for Mizzo, I didn't quite get to see where exactly they're ranked, but I know I've seen them play. They are very, very good. Right, and I mean, again, our academy team, I mean, just talking about them a little bit, they have done so well. You know, shout out to my main man, Theo, uh, sometimes <laughs> cast with us here on the desk. But, you know, hopefully good stuff from him and his crew, and you got to hope they come away with the dub. But I know that at 8.30, we also have our varsity matchup, so take us through that. Yeah, our Saints Overwatch varsity game is going to be finishing off the night with us. It's going to be up against Ashland University. A little bit unfamiliar with them personally, but I'm excited to see them play. You know, they're going to be higher ranked. Saints finished off the regular season 6-1, and one, finishing second overall in the leaderboards and started off this playoffs with a bye. So it's looking to be an interesting match. You know, Ashland, I believe, already played one match, so a little bit more warmed up in this playoff series. Right, but I mean... There's a reason why our varsity team got the bye. You see the names. You know what they've done all season. A guy I want to talk about as well as of recent success is Tread, our new <laughs> tank who comes in. You know, the meta in Overwatch is a little bit... Uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a thing right now, to yep. say the least. But it's interesting because you see Tread come in on the tank... And he then plays Doomfist. Are you kidding me? And usually you would think that's not very meta right now. Yeah, no, it's not. Other than a really good Winston and, you know, some teams that don't really run Winston, they then usually auto go to D.Va, right? Uh, unless it's Flashpoint, you got the Junker Queen. Most teams kind of stick to those. But then you got Tread coming in on Doomfist. And we haven't been complaining because he's just been tearing up the competition. Yeah, he has just been a force. He puts the doom in the doom fist. You know, as you can see, the players going up against them, that's all they can feel really is doom because he is so good on that doom fist. And doom fist is one of those uh, heroes that so hard to play against. He just gets up in your face, stuns you, dances around you. As soon as you think you got a pick on him, he leaps up in the air and gets out of there. Right, and <laughs> another player as well that I think that if you're Ashland, you need to try to watch out for is Noxious on that DPS role. Obviously, you know we've talked about him a lot throughout this season. Team and, Canada, you know, yeah, you know, you know, we all know <laughs> that you know, we've all been there. You know, yeah, Team Canada, yeah, we you know whatever. The whole point is we need to see results today out of our guys and. I think they're going to personally deliver. Let's just go over some results real quick for what you think you can expect here. Uh, I think the Saints might sweep this one. I think they're going to start off strong. Overwatch, the varsity team, very good. Unrivaled, only losing out to Maryville, I believe, in the regular season. So, you know, 
They're some of the best. They went toe to toe with them as well. They it was a sweep from Maryville, which is to be expected. But they're pretty much a contenders team, <laughs> or they were a contenders team, and now they're down here in the collegiate scene. Saints still went toe to toe with them, taking a map here and there. But overall, I think the Saints are looking pretty good going into this. Right. I mean, you know, on you know, again, like you were saying, Maryville is literally just a team of. Ex-pros who would be on pro <laughs> rosters right now if the Overwatch League was uh, still up, which I know it is making a return, but at the time being, when it did collapse, a bunch of these pros immediately went to Maryville. So you see right there that they're six and zero, but it uh, or sorry, this is the, the League of Legends, leagues, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, there you go. They're so Maryville there. <laughs> is still up on the top. So Maryville, that just tells you honestly just how good of a school they are for esports. They usually have some big names, and you know, again, big name that you are looking to see them probably take over a little bit in the Snakes playoffs. But we don't got to talk about Maryville because that's not what we need to talk about right now. We need to talk about Academy and Varsity Overwatch and League of Legends for Varsity. But Looking on the academy side, let's look at the lineup right now. We see that we do have Grubby, and there is Theo. A couple of these guys as mm -hmm. well with some different names uh, than we're used to seeing in the server. But again, those will be revealed when we get into it. Right off the bat, you know, I think someone who they really need to watch out for on the uh, side of academy. Uh, you know, again, don't want to, you know hype him up too much, but you really have loved seeing what you have seen so far out of Theo on this exactly, season, yeah. right? I mean, on the uh, on the May, on the Genji, I mean, typically right now, the meta usually leans towards a lot of Tracer and Sojourn, but... You see him on the Tracer occasionally. Uh, occasionally, just so occasionally, <laughs> but he's such a good uh, DPS player on some of these little, you know, off rolls, and even sometimes, you know, again... Playing once in a while brings out the Torb. Mm -hmm. Very unexpected. <laughs> so, uh, it's wasn't it one of the games we were watching? He got a multi kill on Torb with the alt with the with the yeah, Zarya yeah, alt. Yeah, they all yeah. clumped together so and they, then they used the lava. He took the grab and then he immediately <laughs> just hit it with the lava. So he has was, those crazy plays. He does have crazy plays. Definitely a highlight player. And I mean, we've seen just highlight after highlight coming out from Theo. But you know, again, probably going to be a lot of highlights tonight. And uh, I would expect it to be a very exciting night of games. Yeah, I'm very excited to see what we have in store today. And what would be your guess for the League of Legends game? I know it's not your exact forte, but I know you know what's going on. You're a Saints fan. Do you think they're going to win this one out? Do you think it's going to be close? What do you think the score is going to be like? Well, you know, I really got to think about how our league team has been doing. I got to think about the roles that everyone's been doing. Of course, you know, we can't talk league and not bring up Maddie on the jungler. I, he's just, his positioning has been simply sublime this entire season. Uh, and just, you know, that sense is just crazy. It almost feels like yeah. he has a sixth sense when it comes to that. But I think that, you know, again, 6-0 against 6-0, it's, it's going to be a battle of the Titans. you got to think it's going to go to... Th if, if the Saints take this in, in two, immediately, just 2-0, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a little ridiculous. i got to <laughs> give kudos to Oklahoma Christian for having a record like this. I'm sure they're going to show us some interesting stuff. I think this one does go to three games, but I do see your Saints taking it 2-1 to one being your final score. Uh I'll have to agree with you with that as well. But looking over at the patch notes here, we have a few nerfs on Fiora. Volibear was very lethal in that jungle rel, still being a little bit of a flex pick, but mainly in that support position, going to get nerfed out as well. And the buffs really surprising as well. We've been seeing a lot of Karma played in at mid, and she's getting buffed even further, even though she's more of a support champ. We also have Kane getting buffed as well over in the jungle, so we might see a little bit more play as him. And of course, Olaf, a pick of Ricky's is going to be in here as well. And I don't think enough time has passed for Skarner's rework to have come into play here in the tournament, but that might be something that we see as well. As we look over here in the draft, we're seeing Oklahoma Christian ban out the Jin Zhao to start. Right, and I mean, Matthias, you know, again, League is a little more your bread and butter. We look at the draft right now. What do you think the bans are going to look like? If you had to give some predictions, let's see if you can get a couple. Oh, I think the must bans. Oh, weird. We didn't see what Saints banned. Did they forgo a ban there? I don't. 
<laughs> maybe, so maybe they did. They're just they feeling did, very confident. But, you know, again, uh, back on this now. What do you oh, think? Oh, I think it might be. Might have oh, to restart. might have a little yeah. bit of a rehost. Okay, well, you know, it is possible. But what I will say is, uh, again, if it is technical issues, um, what could you see being some bands that, if you are Oklahoma Christian, what could you see them, you know, taking out, knowing that the Saints have done what they have done so far this season? It looks like they're just taking out the strong picks. They've seen what the Saints can do on that Jack's top. Jack's can also be played jungle as well, but top is where he truly shines. We have Zin Zhao also being banned out. Another strong jungle pick, like you said. You're just trying to deprive Maddie of whatever he can get. And then they also ban that ADC as well. And then we're going to go looking over the Talia ban coming out from the Saints is interesting. They played against the Talia in the last match. I don't think it gave them too much trouble, but I think she's just a strong pick overall. Her alt being able to cut off half of the map. And they also ban out an Aphelios bot. You don't quite see Aphelios. And Aphelios, I don't think, is super strong right now. It could be stand corrected, but that might just be a comfort pick on the side of Oklahoma. So they're going to go opt with the Jinx. And Jinx is very strong right now. Her passive got updated. She shoots very fast. As long as she can get one of those kills, she can end up just rushing down the entire rest of the team. Looking at the rest of the Saints, it's going to be a Nico pick. That's probably going to be a Nico mid. We've been seeing that a lot from the Saints. And also a Volley Bear. Well, Volley Bear did get a nerf. He's still very strong. Could be top. Probably going to be jungle, though. Right, I mean, you were talking about some of these bands being a little more, you know, unusual. But what I will say is when you're playing a team like Oklahoma Christian, it would help if you have film on these guys and if you do some VOD review. So they probably have these bands due to probably some, you know, Definitely. pocket strats that these guys are bringing out. There's really no other reason for it unless we're just completely missing something. Oh, Skarner must be able to be played now as the Saints are hovering. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no, we were going <laughs> in over the patch notes, obviously. That's Bring a, it up. They reworked his entire character. He still keeps the same Skarner roots, but they give him a nice graphical update and some gameplay updates as well. But no, that's going to be a Nautilus Switch instead. Tank. We got faked out by the Skarner. So. You got so happy. <laughs> I was you excited got to see so it. happy his, so quick. His new ult, he can skewer up to three people and then carry them around. You can do some pretty zany stuff with that. But going back to the bands, we see the Saints at ban out Braum, getting rid of one of the supports on the side of Oklahoma Christian. And... Oklahoma Christian, once again, ban banning out an ADC. It's going to be Callista. And now, looking at these team comps, Saints still have top and bot lane to choose from, so there's some pretty big choices to be made here. Both very counterable positions. Right, and I mean, it's going to be interesting to see who the Saints ban out. And now, going into Oklahoma Christian, it's going to be it for the ban phase. Matthias, quickly wrap up there, and then let's get into some of these more exactly. lines for what you can expect for the bot lane. So we ban out the Thresh, another support from the Saints, and then the Tristana, Rock Boom's <laughs> favorite there from the side of Oklahoma Christian. So this bot lane is going to be pretty interesting. We might see a Zeri or the Kaisa, which we've been seeing a lot lately. Another very strong pick. I don't think there's been a season recently where she's not been one of the top of the line ADC. She's just so maneuverable, does so much damage, and has some poke to boot. And now, looking over on the team comp from the side of Oklahoma Christian, they did pick the Ivern and Irelia. Ivern going to be jungle, Irelia most likely going to be mid, and Olaf looking to be top, possibly jungle, but most likely top with that Ivern there. And that's going to be a decent pick top, but now Saints will be in a position with their last pick to try and counter this one out. And going over the lineups right now, we can obviously both see both sides. If you had to look at St. Clair's lineup right now, judging about the chemistry and what kind of brings about this last pick, who do you think they're the most likely going to play, uh, play as we see the targets picked up by Oklahoma Christian? And what kind of play style do you think the Saints are probably going to use in this first game, given the lineup we've seen? Well, they're going to be playing around this Nautilus here. He's going to be the only one, aside from the Nico, who's going to have CC here, mainly relying on that Kaisa to try and burst everybody down. And the Volleybear is going to get there in the thick of it, make himself the target of all the attacks and try and tank everything out. It doesn't really have as much of a game plan on the side of Oklahoma Christian. It seems like they're just going to go for the simple damage, try and win these lanes, win them early. But with Saints picking Darius last, that's another strong pick in the top lane, but not as dominant as I've seen him be. And against the Olaf, the Olaf has some sustain, but 
it's not going to be enough to deal with that Darius. So I'm going to give the overall comp over to the Saints. So you would predict immediately right now, given the lineups that we've uh, seen and given your breakdown, you think the Saints are going to take this first game? The Saints have less to mess up here in their comp. The Irelia, very high skill ceiling. Olaf, he can get in there and do some good damage, at, but it's not going to be the best against Darius. If Darius can really just deal out that damage, shut him down, bleed him out. Then we can look at the Jinx. The Jinx is going to be their DPS, but Jinx needs to be in a winning position for her to be good. She needs to get that first kill. It's like tipping over a bunch of dominoes. You got to activate her passive, and then she can run through the entire team. Then Tarek... Good choice for Jinx, but later on in the game, I don't know how he will be performing overall. I feel like the Saints' game plan is much more simple and less hard to screw up. So if you were, and just put yourself in the shoes of Oklahoma Christian, you see what the Saints are bringing right now, yeah. obviously. What would your little uh, plan be to kind of exploit a, a weakness, if any, that you could see from this lineup in order to get this advantage? Well, the Ivern, he'll be pretty vulnerable in the early game. I think this Volley Bear is just so strong all throughout the game. But especially in that early game, he's so tanky. He does a lot of damage. He can grant shields to himself. He has so much sustain and damage to make up for it as well. I feel like the way Oklahoma Christian can win this one out is maybe mid to late game that like transition point right before baron is where they're going to want to be really make their plays trying to win these duels in lane and then if they can get any sort of lead if they continue to perform it all rely, relies on perfection here irelia really wants to get all these stacks up so does jinx olaf not so much but those two main damage dealers want to continue to shred them down try and continue to press any advantage that they have but if they lose that, if they're in the disadvantaged state, it's going to be very hard to get out. Well, I mean, that's going to be a very good <laughs> breakdown from you. I mean, I, I think I've heard everything that I like to see here. I do think I have the Saints taking this game as well. And we should be getting into the server very shortly. Yeah, we're just, you know, waiting for that time limit to go up. But do you have any predictions yourself about how the next few games are going to go? How long? I guess I already asked. You said it was going to be two and one. But after the draft, has your opinion changed at all? Uh, the thing is, right, I mean, obviously, League isn't my bread and butter. But given your breakdown, it does seem like you seem to think that the Saints have a little more of a solid lineup in terms of an easier, uh, you know, pathway of what the plan is. Whereas you see that Oklahoma Christians is a little more wild and a little more uh, dynamic, I guess, mm -hmm. is what you could uh, say. Yes. So, again, it's going to be a test to see. Remember, both teams being 6-0. Maybe Oklahoma is that good. Maybe they have some, you know, pocket strats that they will bring out that the Saints haven't seen that they have let themselves get played into. But for the most part, I would say that given the ban phase that we saw, it seems that the Saints have definitely done their VOD review and film on mm -hmm. these guys because a couple of the picks here were a little bit, you know, not normal for what we would usually mm -hmm. see. So it seems like the Saints are prepared for this matchup regardless. Maybe it means that Oklahoma had to get a little bit awkward with their lineup. Mm -hmm. Given that alone, judging and weighing those things, I do think that the Saints should take this quick game one. And I think it'll be done... I'm actually going to go a little bit cocky. I'm going to say it's going to be done relatively quickly as well. Like Shouldn't... 20 minutes right after the Baron? Or do you think uh, it's going to be I mean, like you know, you got to give him, you gotta give him the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. But I'm telling you right now, this game is not going 40 minutes. At least I, I don't see it going anywhere near that long. Judging by the language... Uh, I guess not the body language, but the language yeah. inside of the band phase. <laughs> the that draft we language. Yeah, the draft <laughs> language. That, that's, I guess, a term we can use, yeah. right? So <laughs> if we want to give it to the draft language, we'll... Uh, We'll say that for yeah, sure. Yeah, and one more thing I want to mention. As this is playoffs, I feel like these game ones are going to be very interesting, you know. without the re Throughout the regular season, you don't want to show all the cards you have in your arsenal. You want to keep some tricks up your sleeve. So I think this first game one, it's going to be feeling each other out. But then game two, they're really going to pull out all the stops. Maybe we're going to see some crazy comps come out. And I think that's where we're going to see both teams really get into their own another thing just hit me mm -hmm. 
the lineup that comes out from Oklahoma Christian, I don't remember if, uh, of course, this is for, again, uh, last regular uh, season game of the season, guys. So uh, while it isn't a playoff matchup, this will decide who is the oh. first seed. Yeah, so just uh, <laughs> wrapping up there. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, but, you're good, you're but, good. But what I will say is this could be a little bit of a mixture of Oklahoma maybe having some fun the last regular season game. But to me, I don't necessarily know. I uh, you know, you want to take this serious. You want to see if you can get that first seed, obviously. But maybe Oklahoma, looking at the bracket and looking at potential playoff contention and seeding potentially, maybe they would like to have that second seeder play into it. Maybe they know something that the Saints don't. We have no clue because we're not them. <laughs> no. But what we can assume right now is that it was definitely a little bit of an interesting draft phase. And I got to say, the Saints on the end of it, I would say, have won this uh, draft phase for the first for the first match. Yeah, I'd agree with you there, but I think you're correct. I think Oklahoma Christian is having fun. It is a good comp. It's like none of these are throw picks at all, but it definitely leads to they want to have a short game. They want to have the lead carry it all the way out through the end, whereas the Saints want to drag this one out. They want to bring it to a decisive victory for them, but they want to have every drag and they want to have every objective Well. I'd say Oklahoma Christian is just playing for kills over everything. Right, and <laughs> I also have to bring up, I've just heard some shocking news mm -hmm. uh, through my headset as well. It seems that our Academy Overwatch game versus uh, University of Missouri has actually ended up being a forfeit win for the Academy <laughs> Saints as well. No way. So I mean, uh, that's literally <laughs> first round of playoffs just done for I, them I, they I, don't even get into the server missouri just forfeits and they're moving on to round two i guess i have to break the fourth wall a little bit here there's a running joke whenever tj one of our observers is gonna observe a match yep. that ends up in ff and once and we got the it, playoffs we're like no way that's not gonna happen we've strategically made him the observer ladies and gentlemen just because we knew this was going to have a more likely chance of happening no it's honestly horrible well, yeah. and it, it, it's crazy that it's actually just happened again uh all of these when they do happen have also been in our favor so yeah, right. I, mean, I don't want to make it seem sketchy here but uh you know uh, tj might just be kind of our, that force yeah, yeah he observing. might kind of be like the, the lucky the lucky uh the eye of sword yeah, yeah for sure he might be the lucky charm here for uh these saints but you know uh looking at that then it means that we're gonna oh, have league until 8 30 uh 8 30 and then we'll have overwatch kicking off at 8 30 then so on the varsity side obviously that was the matchup that i was looking forward to a little bit more so hopefully Praying that does not also get forfeited. <laughs> I but severely doubt it. Enough of us talking, uh, at least seeing our faces. Let's get into some League of Legends. It's St. Clair. It's Oklahoma Christian. It's the final regular season game. It's a Clash of the Titans. And without further ado, it's go time. Yeah, here we are on the Summoner's Rift. Everybody's loading up, and I think we have an invade coming out from Oklahoma Christian going through the Baron Pit. Doing a weird sneaky play. I've never seen this before. And once again, we did say they were playing for funsies, and they are going for these very strange fun strats to start. Well, you see Maddie just kind of chilling over here, and y you got to think that St. Clair are aware of what's going on, especially when they see the projectiles going through the rocks. So, again, if you had to think of what exactly Oklahoma Christian has set up, you know, what do you think is going on here necessarily that you think Oklahoma Christian is trying to do? Maybe getting the nerves of St. Clair a little bit off? What do you What do you think? Uh, it's going to be tough. I think they were just trying to get an early pick. You know, they want to get those early leads like everybody does when you go for a cheeky invade. But I think that it's definitely not what they wanted to happen. They just kind of wasted a little bit of time. Not much happened. They're hoping to catch Maddie off in that bush, but now we're gonna look over. He's gonna start up on the blue buff anyways, not even go for that red buff in case there's an invade. Going over to the top lane. They're just trading blows, clearing the waves. They're just starting things off pretty typical, even though Oklahoma wants to start things off very aggressively. Right, I mean, it's funny that Oklahoma is the one to start things off very aggressively. As we see, Ricky is in a horrible position, but he should be able to just get out in time. 
you know, Ricky's an interesting one because he's on that top lane always, but, you know, usually you see sometimes in the top lane when people do play uh, a tank, um, as Ricky usually does, he doesn't usually get locked onto a passive tank, but Ricky has a very aggressive playstyle on the top, which, you know, means that it's a little risky, but the Saints usually do come out on top of it. So it's interesting to see Oklahoma, you know, they don't shy away from that early aggression. They take the fight, if anything, to Ricky on the top lane to start off, which makes stuff, a, it makes it a little bit interesting. Yeah, it definitely makes it pretty interesting there. And looking here in the bot lane, overall, St. Clair not doing great CS-wise. Oklahoma Christian winning every other lane except for mid right now. Jungle wise, looking over there. Volleybear, Maddie, gonna be definitely a lot faster than this Ivern to start. Like I said, the early game gonna go over to Volleybear. But later on in the game, Ivern has some tricks up his sleeve. He can summon that golem, put up a little bit of extra cover. It can be pretty, pretty tricky to play around. And now Ricky prepping the wave, maybe hoping for an invade. Flashes, goes in, gets the CC, but can't get there in time. Maddie Maddie's rushing in, he flashes as well. And now they're going to get first blood. And Maddie is going to be looking to be the force here. Right, I mean, a beautiful play from Maddie there, just kind of drifting from his position, giving the support to Ricky and a 2v1 that I believe the top laner from Oklahoma Christian was not expecting at the time. The stun comes out, and it's all she wrote from there. St. Clair cleaning things up with a clean first blood. Yeah, nice first blood to start things off. That's the lead that Oklahoma Christian wanted so badly, but St. Clair getting the nice early jungle invade up there top is going to put them in an amazing position. Alice trying to throw off this Ivor and playing for the crab there down in the bottom river. Gonna have to delay that a little bit longer. Going back over here in mid. And Nico doing an amazing job at just controlling this wave, keeping Irelia under her tower, making sure she can't do all too much, can't get too many stacks, and just staying out of melee range, because that's the key against this Irelia. Before she gets ult, she can't do all too much. Sure, she can dash in here, deal some nice burst damage, and with Tarek there to join her, they actually might get a kill. I'd stand correct. The caster's curse. Bakery Boy goes down early enough. I just didn't expect the support to come from bot lane there. Right, and I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, if you can't beat him, join him. It's the same <laughs> strategy that happens in the top lane from earlier, shades of Maddie and Ricky. So it seems that Oklahoma, they make the adapt, uh, the adapting play. They get the successful pick on mid. And now it seems like, you know, Oklahoma, they're applying that pressure a lot on the bot lane. Looking at it, you know, early, it is a little bit of a slower start. There are things that we can kind of dive deeper on. But again, this is just kind of still the laning phase. So there's going to be a little bit of a slower start to this game. Yeah, it's a slower start, but I've definitely seen some slower starts. We're already seeing oh, for sure. two Absolutely. kills be committed. Some very weird rotations coming out. Like usually we don't see support rotate until a little bit later in the game, but that's just how comfortable they are. You know, this Jinx, sure they lost wave control, but they didn't die, they didn't lose too much of importance there. And now Volleybear, Maddie already starting the grubs up there top. You need those. Every time I've seen a team win a game, it's usually over those grubs. If you can get all six stacks, you will just be shredding those towers down late game. Right, and I mean, if you are St. Clair, judging by the start that you have gotten yourself, you have the slight gold advantage, obviously, which, you know, it isn't very much, so there's not really much you can talk about there. And again, that can be made back and brought back very quickly, obviously, from Oklahoma Christian as I look through that right now. But judging by the start, if you are on either side, you know, again, St. Clair does have that gold advantage uh, or a slight gold advantage, mm -hmm. but Oklahoma Christian, we saw that they kind of took that bot lane very quickly, at least got a little bit of control. Whose shoes would you rather kind of like to be in, judging by what we've seen so far? I think I'd rather be in the Saints' shoes right now because those grubs, like I said, they got all three without any contestation from Oklahoma. And now, if they can manage to get Dragon as well, they'll be looking very good. They have they have won the early game at that point, getting all the early game objectives. Sure, Oklahoma Christian doing a little bit better in terms of CS, but you know, the game is built upon these buffs. They stack and they stay relevant throughout the entire game up until the end. The Saints already stacking them up. A little bit of a jungle diff right now. That's my. <laughs> 
that's my prognosis here. But this Ivern, definitely once he reaches level 6, will start to be a little bit scarier. I believe the Golem being taken by Matty on the Volley Bear. So, so now, you know, we see that they have made some more progress. Obviously, the Saints have sort of, you said, the shoes that you would rather be standing in. So again, pick to pick your brain a little bit on the side of Oklahoma Christian, right? We were talking about lineup earlier. Given sort of what they've done so far in the early game, what would kind of be the next objective if you were Oklahoma Christian that, you know, you seem to have lost the starting game? What would you look to do next, essentially? Their whole team comp is based one. around clearing these waves and then getting kills. I know it sounds a little ridiculous to be like, oh, just get kills. Like, of course, everybody wants to get kills, but look at this. You will clear the wave with the Irelia, gets full stacks and gets some nice burst damage. That's... Irelia and Jinx's MO here. You want to clear the wave, use your buffs from that, your passive buffs, to try and burst down the enemy. But Saints doing an amazing job at realizing that, realizing the lanes aren't going to be exactly where they get all the kills, but they'll still be able to do some as we have an engagement here. Irelia uses ult, the pop loss, and comes out from Nico. And now there's the ult from Maddie as well. Bakery Boy goes down. Will Maddie be able to get the kill? No, he will not, as Ivern is there. A little bit more of a support jungler there, able to shield, able to get some neat stuff going on, but looking at some crazy <laughs> things going Russian. on. We have a brawl up here in the top lane. Ricky was winning, but now has to back out of the 2v1. Right, and I mean, it is going to get a little bit messy here in the top lane. Ricky probably not going to be on the better half of it. You would expect him to see his demise and there it is. So I must say, you know, St. Clair, we've seen multiple times there, other than the first fight that did go down in that top lane, they seem to have this sort of aggression that they want to put on Oklahoma, but Oklahoma is there time and time again with the support from the second player coming in to aid uh, the side of their comrades. So, so far, Oklahoma doing a really good job of just kind of playing together and finding not even a trade out. They're just finding these picks that mm -hmm. then aren't able to get answered back. Even, you know, Maddie, the support could not deal with it when it came through and he had to back out of dodge. So right now, Oklahoma Christian looking pretty good, but it is notable to say that as we saw earlier, St. Clair did have that first dragon. Yeah, they did get the first dragon. Not going to be as strong of a dragon as they want it to be, though. Ocean Drake, going to let them sustain a little bit longer, let them lane a, bit, a little bit longer, but that's really not where they want to be. They want to be get some damage advantage in here. Probably a Fire Drake, Chemtech, something that'll give them an aid in a, a, a one of these bursty fights, because that's what Oklahoma's all about. Just do the laning, wait it out, and then when the time is right, when you have a teammate rotating on you, you go full burst and knock them dead and knock them down there. And we're going to look over. There's a big engagement happening mid, and we see the Nautilus have come out, but it's not going to be enough as the Tark is also rotated over as well. But Maddie's going to be the cavalry trying to save them all out. The tank has arrived, but now looking over at two more tanks top. Going to be a little bit fight as well. This fight's happening in every single lane right now. The Kaisa ult is going to be committed, unable to get a kill. We're going to look back over at Ricky, unable to get the hook. He wants to bring this fight under tower. And speaking oh, of fights no, under Joseph. towers, <laughs> we're going to see Maddie jump in, and Rock Boom finally gets the kill on that Jinx who has been so slippery. I mean, that was an absolute jumping. Uh, I, <laughs> what can you do? I mean, what can you do there? The support just a little bit late to come through, but do you even really do that? Commit a second player to there? Not really. It just seems like a lost cause, especially with the three there. You don't want to commit a second pick and a second player to St. Clair. So I would say for the situation that had to happen, St. Clair played that beautifully, but decent on Oklahoma Christian as well, not to mess up and not to give them just a little too much. And while we're talking about that, Oklahoma Christian just cleaning up the second set of grubs, looking to make this one 3-3. Three to three. Now, Saints losing that jungle advantage even further. Oklahoma Christian looking very good. Sure, they just lost a player, but while all three Saints and the jungler were down there in bot lane, they managed to get grubs even up the scoreline jungle. And now, if they can get this next dragon, they will be in a very firm lead. Right, and so I'm assuming your stance on the question that I asked you about, like, you know, four or so minutes ago has completely <laughs> shifted. But, uh, not completely. The not Saints completely. still could make it work. They still are in a decent spot right now, the better spot. But, you know, one or two kills goes Oklahoma Christian's way again. Maybe they get another jungle objective. It's totally flipped. It's teetering right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But again, you know, like I said, I did think the Saints were going to win this first game. But if I'm proven wrong, 
can I be surprised? Is Not necessarily. There are certain things that we can talk about. Right now, yep. Matthias, take it away on this team fight. We can take it away. <laughs> Nautilus goes in, but once again, they tried for that thing that got them to kill the first time, trying to go for the tower dive, but didn't have the tools they needed to secure right. anything there. Just took some damage from the tower. And it's Oklahoma Christian that bring the support yet again. So uh, again, now we've seen it twice Pop where awesome. it hasn't worked, but it seems that Oklahoma Christian, they are so good at just the timing on saving their allies, right, with the supports. So that is something that is huge and massive in this beginning uh, phase, obviously, for Oklahoma Christian. And what I was going to get into before I actually hold that thought, because we might have another aggressive engagement, but in case that doesn't go down, what I was going to say... Yeah, this is such a tense game. You yeah, never it is know a when a fight's going to break you, out. Exactly. So I'm trying to really just pick sort of where I can kind of cut in and give uh, some backstory. But I, I, what I was going to say is you kind of have to expect that, again, 6-0 and teams on both sides. doesn't surprise me at all if Oklahoma takes this first game. Uh, again, because of the fact that, you know, they're, you know, on paper just as good. Mm -hmm. So... Again, anything can happen, like you said, and so far, I really like the way Oklahoma has just been playing around supporting their original uh, fights that come through, and as you see, they're doing some work on their own dragon as oh, well now. Yeah, but now, because he's given up that jungler, they need to get this kill up in the top lane, but he's unable to secure it, unable to get any CC on that Olaf. That's Olaf's whole shtick there. They're going to just have to back out, and now... I would definitely say Oklahoma's in the lead now. Not an insurpassable lead from the Saints. They're really competitive with the gold. It's just now dead even on the board right now. Right, and I mean, again, dead even on the board, but you can definitely say the momentum is shifting in Oklahoma's side. It's just been such an interesting game because it's it's just been back and forth to start out. If you really want to get into the intricacies of the little things, it's been pretty much punch counter punch. And the counter punch is coming in strong from Oklahoma. Definitely. Oklahoma, that CS is adding up. Sure, it's just slightly ahead of the Saints, but those tiny differences add up in the end. Saints doing an amazing job in the bot lane, though. They almost have a tower taken down already. Meanwhile, their tower is still sitting pretty healthy there. I think it's on like four or so bars. And now, I would say... Saints, if they can take a tower down, get these bot laners roaming, they'd be in a great spot. But now, I think this mid rift tower rift. is going to be going down. Unless this rift is going to... Yeah, that rift is going to be going top or mid. And now we have a big brawl happening here in the bot lane. Maddie goes in once again. They take the tower down. Everybody in the bot lane is exposed. But Tarkal comes out. He's going to be stunned from the pop blossom. And now this Nautilus is trying to stun them all out. But it's going to be Tark who stuns out three of them. And now they're all half health. They got the kill. They just want to get out now scot-free. Don't want to give a kill over as they just evened up the kill line. This game is about as even as it could get. But St. Clair securing a tower puts them in the lead. Right, and again, really good execution there from St. Clair. They get the tower, they get the pick as well, the boot, and they just get out of dodge. Oklahoma, you know, respecting uh, the fact that their support has just been so strong so far. When they usually come into these fights late, they end up usually taking not only a St. Clair player down, but also space. And so it's interesting to see that St. Clair, you know, they adapt to that a little more in that team fight. They get what they need and they get out. They don't overextend like they have in the past two fights that they've been a part of. And it was a very clean play from St. Clair. It was a very clean play. They knew they had the exact timing right with how quick they needed to take that tower down without taking more than one or two shots. Very great play all around. I believe the rift went top, but not too much happened for that. And once again, the Nautilus is going to lead the charge. Stun out the <laughs> Jinx there mid, and they're going to get one kill. Looking for a second there on the Tarek, and they managed oh to get God. it. And now they're looking to take down this tower as well, trying to keep this Maybe last at bay. And look at that rock boom, getting a triple wow. kill mid. And they're probably going to get another tower as well. And just as we said, Oklahoma had the lead. Saints very very quickly taking this one back you said it was insurmountable but insurmountable is not something that usually comes to mind when you think about rock boom and what he's done so far for the saints lineup we do see the red turret does get destroyed but the saints answer back by taking a blue turret of their own yeah that was a good pick there mid of course that bot lane gonna be evened up now but i 
think I like that a lot, as they're also going to get a third tower up there, getting all the tier 1 turrets out of the way. The Saints have a lot more room to play with, especially Maddie can dive in much easier now into these lanes when these laners are pushed up. And the team Oklahoma Christian has built all around farming, all about doing these DPS, getting these passives, are going to have a little bit of a tougher time doing that. But as you can see, they need to take down one of these towers here mid. They're going to go for it, and there's the Rift being committed mid. And there it is, the Grubs are going, going to go down, but Nautilus leads the charge, goes in, gets stunned by every single member on Oklahoma Christian, and gets taken down. Right, and I mean, again, like we said before, punch, counter punch. There's the counter punch from Oklahoma as they then do pretty much an identical play. Not not identical, but you know, you know, the same just that you can get from the previous one. So again, it seems like whenever St. Clair sort of gets the early aggression, Oklahoma at some point, whether it be throughout, you know, a minute or two or whatnot goes by, they end up finding the exact same result. So it's been a beautiful game so far, I would say, from both sides, a very tense one. And as we hit the 18 minute mark, it's almost barren time. Rock Boom getting yet another pick as well. Doing so good. Usually picking a lot of these gunners that will operate at a longer range. So they're not very strong in the beginning game, but then Rocco or Rock Boom able to just pick up the picks one after another as the game goes on. He just becomes unstoppable. So again, we've seen it all season so far. Kudos to him. He's been an absolutely an amazing player, star caliber for the side of St. Clair. And you just love what you see out of him. Yeah, he is always a joy to watch. That's just ADC in a nutshell, and he embodies that perfectly. He's the spear that leads the charge, that pierces the enemy there, and gets those opening picks that you need so badly to get any sort of lead in here. And now the Saints are going to be getting another dragon here. It's looking to be a mountain drake, and that's going to be decent for them. They do have the volley barrier, which operates on the shield, so having a little bit of extra armor and shields is going to be massive. But up in the top lane, they're tier 1. On top goes down. Maddie lurking here mid with the Nautilus. And overall, this is just such an even game. The Saints, though, are in the lead and looking to take another turret down. But this Jinx does so much damage as well. But without the passes from clearing the wave, not going to be able to get a kill. Right, I mean, decent damage coming in onto the turret at the very least, but now St. Clair have to focus on just getting out of dodge, which it seems like for the time being they have been able to do. So again, you know, just some space being taken or whatever, but 30 seconds away from Baron. And right now, if you had to make a prediction, you know, again, assuming that I have an understandable understanding of what your answer is going to be is that it's going to be St. Clair that have the lead right now. Obviously, Baron can switch that up on a dime Definitely. if they let Oklahoma take it. So right now, though, who is in the better control? You know, Who do you expect should be able to make their mark first based on positioning? Who's setting up the best for Baron? Uh, for Baron right now, Definitely with the Saints, they're already warding out that top jungle. They're all coalescing up there. Well, it looks like Oklahoma Christian is just warding out for the next dragon. They want to try and even up these dragons, prevent soul from the Saints, because that will spell doom for them. But now, Oklahoma Christian already moving up, trying to get into this barren position. They know the Saints are lurking around there, trying to get this mid control, trying to stop any sort of crossover. The Aureli gets a nice stun on the Nautilus. Here he has go. to hook out, but he commits the ult as well, and the Taric stun goes out, but they don't get the kill on the Nautilus, and now there's a huge brawl mid happening underneath this tower and now we're gonna see Ricky LaFleur go in get the hook the pop blossom comes out stuns of one of them rock boom gonna get the kill now there's oh. spears in here getting all the kills Ricky gets another another hook from wow Ricky gets another kill and look at that four of them go down the double double kill leading only one Oklahoma Christian remaining and he's gonna have going have to go running home back to fountain and that leaves Saints. I was gonna say that frees up the space. <laughs> they should be able to take Baron now without anything kind of disrupting that. Maybe a potential steal that could kind of come in, but nope, no, not even going to be close. And no reason to either. There's no way that St. Clair was going to let that happen. Given what we've just seen there, that could change or <laughs> that not change, but basically level out for what we would expect for the rest of the game here. It was an absolutely beautiful play, one to put in the highlight reel. And St. Clair are on their way to what I would expect to be utter domination, barring Oklahoma pulling off a miracle. Definitely. Now Oklahoma just wants to try and wait out this Baron get as many kills as they can but they are 
firmly in the losing position right now. The Saints are just in control right now. Every single one of the members is going to be something you don't want to mess with if you're Oklahoma Christian. You're going to have to take at least three of your guys to take down one of them because three of them are just super tanks. And then the remaining two have enough DPS to spell trouble for you, even if you are a tank. I'd say the only one who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Squishies is maybe the Olaf, but look at that, another turret being taken down. They're just gonna go and start to take this jungle as well. Right, I mean, like you said, right now, if you mess with anyone on St. Clair College, it's kind of like, you know, getting 2 v one at a bar fight and the two people <laughs> have pool sticks and you've got nothing. So right now it is going to be St. Clair that look to kind of take that space. They take another turret and they should soon be looking at taking some of these inhibitors as well. Yeah, and look at that now. Ivern's ult is nothing but another <laughs> minion for them to take down as they just burn that one down. They take out a tier three turret leaving only the inhibitor remaining on the side of bot lane and they're just knocking them all down down demolition crew oh, look at that man. they're gonna take a mid turret down soon enough as well just trying to hold it off absorb as many hits as they can and there it is it goes down as well gonna take down another inhibitor two inhibitors down it's gonna be a base race happening from the Irelia but with only Irelia up there in that top lane Nico gonna be coming to meet him up there it's not gonna be quite enough as the saints prepare for the next dragon they want to take this next team fight right before they lose a rift buff but they are a little bit worse for her. they did take quite a few tower shots it might be a dicey one and now they go in the olaf can't be cc'd gonna get take one down looking to take another down trying to lock the, that nautilus but he can't quite or he does do it and now that's going to be a pretty big pick for Oklahoma. That's going to give them the second Mountain Drake. But that's not going to be enough to put them in the lead. They do have two inhibitors exposed. And as you can see on this map, look at those red waves encroaching on their base. They're just going to have to spend some time clearing this out as the Saints will probably try and push these waves further, clear out their jungles, put them in a spot where they can't get any more buffs. And Saints are in a great spot. I mean, look at this. Two super minions already in your fountain. You need to commit so much resources just to stop them. Right, and I mean, you got to kind of think, even with the play that came out from Oklahoma Christian, it's almost in that scenario where... I mean, it's, it's almost all she wrote, but for now, again, you know, Oklahoma, they're still, you know, alive. They're still breathing, but they're definitely not doing well. And right now, you need to commit so many of these resources for these waves that come through from the minions that by the time that, you know, St. Clair comes back, you got to think, like, barring a miracle, this should be it. They only have one more uh, inhibitor to take down as well, I believe, and then it's immediately just right to the Nexus. So, you know, first they're going to clear out those turrets in top lane, and then once they can do that, it's just... It's going to be a complete swamping, which is pretty much what they're setting up for right now. Yeah, right now they just want to try and flood out this fountain, make sure Oklahoma Christian can't move out of this fountain. And then they're going to play for next Baron and probably try and seal this game in their favor. It's been so back and forth. I don't want to say it's all down and out just yet for Oklahoma Christian. They've shown, right as we think they're in the lead, they can turn it around. But it's all going to be there on this go. team fight here. And now Maddie goes in with the ult. Can't get the stun, but the Pop Blossom is going to come out. And unfortunately, Bakery Boy, his team isn't there to be with him. <laughs> and he gets picked out. And the Saints are going to have to turn right back around and prepare for the next jungle objective. Right, well, I mean, Bakery Boy, sadly, 911 <laughs> was not called soon enough. Nope. No sirens over there that you can hear, and you just gotta simply let the five of them take it. And so, it is what it is, right? I mean, if you're St. Clair, the push didn't exactly go how you wanted to uh, for it to go right there, but you're not in any rush. There are kind of countermeasures that you can do, obviously. And if you're St. Clair, how do you re-engage? Do you think you're gonna kind of take a little more time? Or if you're St. Clair, do you just absolutely, when Bakery Boy comes back in, go for the exact same thing and just kind of keep on doing it over and over again? I think that was their last aggressive play. They just wanted to try and use the buffs as they had them, but... I think now they're going to lean back, try and play for this next Baron, because that is their 100% win condition. They could keep gambling, trying to keep gambling on these team fights, try and play confident, but 
Oklahoma Christian still has the damage to dish out. They have a lot of AD champs, very strong champs. But Saints, they've been relying a little bit more on these jungle objectives, getting Baron, really put them in a good position. The wave control was great. They play a little bit more tactically than Oklahoma Christian. Oklahoma Christian just goes full damage, just just knock them down. <laughs> you know, just right. do damage, take them out of the game. Try and put yourself in a position where you can just deal that damage. You know, Ivern sends out that golem just to absorb some of the damage the Saints have. And the Saints, they have some great CC. They can lock down some of these champs very, very well. But the Olaf there tries to be the nuisance there. And there's the stun comes out. Here's the team fight. This could be massive for both sides right now as jungle objectives are loading up. We see one down there in the mid lane. Bakery Boy gets one. Ricky LaFleur gets one on the Ivern. And now it looks like they're all falling down. Looks like even the Nautilus gets one. And now Rockboom going to clean the last few up. CC Moon, the Olaf's going to be the last one to go. And that's going to be all she wrote. It's all five or all four of the Saints are up. Rockboom getting the ace. And now they can waddle up on in here do a little dance as they've earned their victory here taking down one more tower and leading the enemy nexus right and beautifully played out by st Clair, especially when they didn't have the best start in the beginning obviously it was a little back and forth mm -hmm. right we thought it was going to be a little closer but that did not end up happening. St. Clair able to get the cleanup, able to find the picks they needed to in the end, and they're going to be the ones taking game one, as me and you predicted. Yeah, game one really went their way in the end. Like I said, they just played around those objectives amazingly, especially Baron. They just found that perfect fight right before Baron. Positioning was amazing. Vision was amazing right before. They had every bush, every nook and cranny that Oklahoma Christian could hide, and they had it scoped out, so they had nowhere to hide. Took the fight, and then from then on, they had such a wide gap, the game wasn't even close from then on out. Right, and I mean, if we want to talk uh, technicality, obviously, you know, they after St. Clair got that uh, Baron, like you were saying, it was just, it, it was the beginning of the end, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, typically when you watch these St. Clair games or just, you know, league in general, that is sort of how the pacing kind of goes. There are obviously some countermeasures that you can do if it's not on your side. But, again, the percentage flips very drastically when you are on the losing side of that first Baron. So, again... Well played from St. Clair, and, uh, you know, they definitely earned it, looking very strong against a team like Oklahoma Christian going 6-0. And, I mean, I'm going to say it, uh, again, not my bread and butter is league, but if we really want to look back at that game, Oklahoma Christian kind of looked dismantled. They looked a little mm -hmm. bit awkward. They didn't really have too much chemistry other than their supports that did come through and kind of help their players out in that latter end of the beginning stages in those early, uh, you know, brawls. But what I will say is I think that's probably going to be a result of what we saw in that draft phase. Mm -hmm. We saw the picks get banned out, the unusual ones from St. Clair, clearly doing their research on Oklahoma Christian. And you got to think that they were just able to find what their pocket strats were through other games. It seemed like Oklahoma probably had the same game plan that they had for St. Clair with some other teams they had faced in the past. They get burned by it. And it seems like St. Clair just did their homework and they executed. Yeah, and exactly as I predicted, not to pat myself on the back, but... Like I said, Oklahoma Christian, when they were in a position where they could possibly take the lead, it was very scary. Their comp, if it got going, it could have been lethal, but they were just unable to get that significant momentum that they needed. Of course, every league team, you know, you want to be in the lead, you want to have the momentum, but theirs really hinged on that momentum. When they got some kills, when it was going their way, when they had the waves to clear to get those passives, they got those kills relatively quick when they're rotating the mid. They really locked down Bakery Boy. But once it came to these big team fights, they didn't have enough of a lead, enough momentum to really matter all too much in any of those team fights. They couldn't deal out enough damage. Right, and I mean, that was just kind of the tail of the tape. Amazing breakdown. But for now, that's going to be all she wrote for game one. The Saints looking to wrap it up, hopefully, in the next game. But if it goes to three, you cannot blame anything for it. Oklahoma Christian still a very good team, 6-0 and in their own right. It's going to be a battle of the Titans. It's going to go to match two soon. But until then, we're going to take a small little break, and we'll be back with you guys very shortly.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our second game draft of St. Clair College versus Oklahoma Christian. And just looking at this draft already, very similar on the St. side, but very different on the side of Oklahoma Christian. Saints picking up a rel that's going to be a different support and rather than the Nautilus. We look over at the side of Oklahoma Christian. Oriana mid of our spot. Very interesting to start. A little bit more long range. It looks like they're going for a little bit more of a poke comp. I think they want less inconsistencies in their game plan. Because last right. time it relied a lot yeah. on getting the ball rolling, getting those kills, getting those passives. But now they're just going for the whittle them down poke by poke plan. Right, and I mean, immediately you can tell they did not like what the Nautilus was doing to them because immediately Oklahoma, it is going to be one of their bands that they force out. So it is going to be St. Clair who have to do that switch up. Oh, the Kaisa ban as well. The rel, and then there you go. So <laughs> the Kaisa ban as well. So Oklahoma really did not like what they let St. Clair do to them in that first game. They're going to definitely make St. Clair try to switch up as much as they possibly can. And you know Rockboom's the one they're worrying about the most because they banned three ADCs, Tristana, yep. Lucian, and now Kaisa. And now the Saints, they just have... One more ban. It's going to be Alistar banning out two of those supports in tow. And now, looking at what Oklahoma has left to pick, I don't know what they're going to pick a support. Do they go the Tark again? It was decent, but really didn't afford them any major advantage going forward. But it looks like it's going to be the jungler picking next. And now, Jarvan 4 hovering... It might be Wukong actually committed. Wukong is a very good pick right now if you know how to play it. It's a very weird pick, I would say. I don't know how I quite feel about that one. But now, Saints making their last two picks. This is going to be our ADC and our top laner. The two last remaining laners. Siver is being hovered. Don't know how that one's going to go. I don't know if that's going to be the pick, but it is going to be the pick. And I don't know if I love it against Varus. He does get a spell shield. If that works against Varus's arrow, it could be a very good pick. But otherwise, don't know how it's going to be because Sivir has a much shorter range against his Varus. going to continue to get poked out, locked out by his AoE as well. Now, for the top laner, the last remaining top laner, we're going to try and pick something to counter this Olaf. Because while the Olaf didn't get too many kills in the laning phase, I believe it did give some of the team trouble later on. And the Trundle being picked by St. Clair as their top laner. Trundle, very strong pick. Very fast attacker. And just speaking from personal experience, I don't like playing against a Trundle. That's how you know a character's good. Right, and I mean... <laughs> Off rip, it seems like with the bands, obviously, they make Rocco, uh, you know, have to switch up because th that's who they're worried about, obviously, from the first game. And they should because Rocco had, at the very least, I believe, last time I checked Killboard before, we were looking at all these team fights going down and St. Clair wiping the Nexus. I believe he had eight or, or uh, seven or eight to yeah. his name right off rip. So it is going to be a little bit of a test to see how deep in the bag St. Clair can go. But... Right off, you know, the gate, looking at these two lineups for what they are, as we do see the Janna being picked out from Oklahoma Christian. Again, I'll kind of repeat, pick your brain a little bit. What combos go well here for you? What do you like? What play styles do you think you could kind of see being incorporated from both sides? And which side of the scale would you rather be on right now from a pure lineup versus lineup standpoint? Both of these team comps, I would say, well, they work. They're like half of a true comp, I would say. I'd say Oklahoma Christian going for a bit of a poke, trying to make things a little differently. They're going for a completely different game plan. Of course, they want Olaf to be the distraction up there with the CC immune dealing out consistent damage. Wukong going to be in there trying to get the stuns. Jana also going for the knockups as well. But on the side of the Saints, it's 
a little bit of a messier game plan, but as long as the Sivir can continue to clear, because that's what Sivir is going to be doing, if they can clear, get even one kill in the early game, they'll be doing it very, very well from then on out. And the only thing that makes me is scratching my head a little bit is the last two picks on the side of Vokalum Christian, being a Wukong and Janna. I don't know how much synergy Janna has with Varus. I mean, they could go for a knockup. Janna's a good champ, but there's not really like a one-two combo you usually see with these uh, ADC bot lane duos that I can really think of off the top of my head. It's just a little bit more of an uncommon matchup. You usually see Janna with, with someone who needs a knockup like Samira or Yasuo, someone whose passive or skill really benefits from that. Because it's, it's just a, a little bit of a strange comp. I would give the edge over the Saints. They're coming off the momentum of game one. And their comp still has those heavy hitters with Volley Bear. And then Nico mid was a great pick as well. Overall, it's going to be a weird game. As soon as I see it operate, I'll have more information. But this this is not your typical comps I've seen. Right. And again, you know, I just want to kind of say right out the gate uh this is again like you said not typical comps that we're seeing out here from would you say both sides or just mainly st Clair? i would say more so from oklahoma christian but they have more of a of a game plan going on whereas the saints they both are just playing around these bands right i think now both teams with research in the last game that we just saw they know what the team is comfortable with they know what they want to avoid and they band accordingly so now these are kind of the fringe pocket picks from all the team members now so going forward it's just seeing who has the better game sense who played more recently on these more off meta picks especially for rock when we got like all three of his recent picks banned out Right, but I mean, you know, as soon as we get into the server, we'll see how things kind of go. It is probably going to be a little more time before we do get in there. So for now, we'll probably be sending it to a short break, and we'll be back with you very quickly inside of the server.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to Game 2. We saw the draft a little bit more uh, messy, I would say, from both sides as we saw a lot of bands come out. But now we're seeing Oklahoma Christian being very aggressive here in the bot lane, not going for the typical invade that they do. But it looks like it's going to be Maddie getting a little bit of chip damage off them in the early game up there in the top jungle. The Saints starting off on the left side this time. And now... Seeing the supports roll in, award out everything they can award, and now they'll know where this jungler on the side of Oklahoma Christian is going to be heading. Now we see up here the trundle trundling around there in that upper jungle. Overall, nothing too crazy to start off this game. Oklahoma Christian definitely respecting the Saints in this early game a lot more than the last game. Right, I mean, just breaking down how the last game sort of went, uh, again, very uh, easy, uh, or sorry, not very easy, very easy uh, end game for the yeah. Saints, but obviously Quick end. <laughs> in the beginning, it was very back and forth. You got to think that Ricky's position is known about the fight in the top lane will come through, will make the player in Oklahoma Christian just back down just a little bit before the re-engagement comes in and a little bit of a skirmish going down potentially in the bottom lane as well. As well as mid, there's just kind of small brawls happening everywhere at least, you know, soon you would think. So to start things off, it's definitely a very tense beginning. Yeah, definitely tense. It's... Tra blows being traded left and right here. As you see in the mid lane, a little scuffle. Bakery board definitely coming out on top here. Look at that chip damage. This Oriana just unable to land those hits. Now below half health. Varus getting a nice poke here and there. He needs a little bit more ability points though before he can really lay down those arrows. He still has to be careful with his mana. The Sivir though, going to be very consistent at taking down these waves. We move back over, back to the bot lane. Sivir is just crushing these waves down faster than Varus can keep up. And overall, Saints having a way better laning phase than they did last time. And already, we're seeing the yes, early support. gank top. And it looks like Maddie's going to dip out, try and get this Wukong jungle. Not going to get all too much, though. And I think, I think Ricky took quite a few tower shops up there in top lane, un unable to get the kill. Not the best early gank. Right, but I mean, last game, it was the exact same thing that happened. Saints trying to just kind of recreate what they did earlier, but it is not going to work out for them. However, what I will say is, if you really want to look at all three lanes, I mean, to start out, seems that St. Clair has a little more of the control if you really want to break it down to the nitty-gritty. The support should come out here for Bakery Boy, and it is going to be Maddie to collect the first blood. So, beautiful start there. We don't find the initial pick in the top, but that is not the same story for the next 30 seconds as we do see St. Clair taking a clean first blood. Yeah, St. Clair getting another early start. We'll see if they'll be able to hold it this time, though, as Oklahoma Christian always went tit for tat in the last game. Like Absolutely. you said, punch, counter, punch. We're waiting for that counter punch now. But right now, Oklahoma not really in the position to do much of anything. They don't have any waves pushed up. Last time, they had the wave clearing in their favor, the CS in their favor. This time... Not so much, doing a decent job bottling, but only because he's on his lo lonesome here, waiting for his su support to come back. But now, we'll see if he can take this wave back. Bakery Boy, now not having the best shot here, taking a little bit more damage as Oriana. Chip damage coming in clutch right now. Overall, all across the board, even. It's early game, of course, it's going to be even. But Saints not really able to make amazing use of this early lead that they do have. Right, and I mean, again, both teams 6-0 throughout the regular season. There are no, you know, pushovers on the side of Oklahoma Christian. So, again, a very close start, not to anyone's surprise, at least not to me and Matthias' surprise at the very least. But in terms of... Uh, the skirmishes right now, Bakery Boy just looks a little uncomfortable in that mid lane. So it's going to be interesting to see sort of how St. Clair deals with this mid pressure, where the support, if any, is going to happen, comes from. 
Yeah, it's all going to be in Maddie's hands here to swing things anyway. And look at that. He got That's all gross. three grubs once again. That's going to be a major boon for St. Clair. If they can get all six this time, they gave up the other three last time. If they can get all six, they will be in an amazing position. And now going for another early gank. But this Olaf just has so much maneuverability. This slow field isn't going to affect them very much at all. As he has that anti-CC functionality built right within the character. And now we're seeing a brawl come out. But I think this Trono might want to dip out as the jungler is there. The Wukong's there. But no, he's going to take them both on. But doesn't have the sustain to do it. And Trundle goes down. It's 1-1 now in the kill feed. Right, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> I really want to see if we had a player cam on Ricky there. Really <laughs> wanted to see what he was going through. He really wanted that pick. He was hungry. So badly. He was definitely <laughs> fiending for it. So it seems that it is not going to go his way. A little over aggression, and it's not going to go the way of St. Clair. Oklahoma answers back that punch, counter punch like we were talking about. And now just 1-1 one, one apiece, able to find a little bit of top lane control. It's going to be interesting to see now what it comes down to on the side of St. Clair as they take this first dragon. Yeah, it's going to be Cloud well, going to be, unless a crazy seal. Yeah, yeah no crazy seal going to yeah. come out. They're not even <laughs> close to it. They are pushed up on the tower, though. But the rest of the team's not going to go for the gank. Maddie wants this kill mid. The Pop Blossom comes out from the Nico, gets the stun as well. And with Maddie also yep. there, that is... I was going to oh, say a secure wow. kill as it could be, but he manages to flip out, but Bakery Boy seals the deal, and now they catch Wukong getting a little bit too greedy, going for the invade in the top lane. Going to commit the flash and the dash, but not going to be able to save himself. He runs under the tower, I think, hoping for an execute, but with the minions there, it's not going to quite work out for him as Bakery Boy gets another kill. Two kills going over to Bakery Boy. Now he's going to be sitting at pretty in the lead, a firm lead there in the mid lane. So you see right, it. I mean, Bakery Boy, you know, just doing such a good job there, able to find his double kill. But look at Ricky. He's not in a very good spot right now. He needs to be careful, but I think it's just a little bit too little too late. It's just going to be the end for him. But on the side of St. Clair, we do see, obviously, you know, we saw that they did get the three grubs. We saw that they did get the first dragon. You definitely think that St. Clair so far have the advantage in the start. Yeah, they definitely have the advantage right now. That can easily slip away. But with them getting every single objective so far and, and getting Drake as well, it's not... Looking like Oklahoma Christian has much ground to stand on. Sure, they're keeping up with kills. Just unable to keep up with objectives. And time and time again, I must say, jungle is one of the most important roles in the game. I'm sure everybody knows this, but you can just see how these buffs, that's what breaks the, the stalemate between these two flawless teams. Those buffs matter so much, especially at this high level. Right, and I mean, it's just no easy task if you're going up against Maddie as well. Such an amazing jungler in his own right. And now, Ricky, <laughs> you know, you gotta wonder. It's always funny with Ricky. You never really know if he's just gonna kind of like go for the rap play or if he just goes, sends it. And, and, and you know, even in situations where it doesn't look like it is the best area to do so, it's always kind of fun to have a player like Ricky who's so good in those aggressive positions and does kind of have the initiative to take him on sometimes, <laughs> makes for some entertaining gameplay. Yeah, he's a very fun pop to watch there. But there in the bot lane, it looks like Oklahoma Christian tried to go for a gank, but really fizzled out into nothing as the Wukong doesn't have the health right now to dive under tower, secure those kills like this Volley Bear does. And we're seeing a post nerf Volley Bear as we look through the patch notes. And as you can see, still just a ridiculously strong pick. And now the Grubs are going the way of St. Clair, securing the Grub lead, getting a four, trying to get all six. And if they get all six, these towers are gonna be nothing but paper mache to them. As you can see, Wolfram Christian wants to stop this. Pop Blossom comes out, Maddie cleaning it up, and he gets one, but this Wukong's also gonna all try and knock them up, stun them up, trying to delay this as much as he can. But without their mid laner, they don't have enough damage to dish out. Sure, they have the stuns, but they don't have the damage to back it up. Now Rock Boom being taken down by this Varus doesn't get killed though. It takes a lot of damage. It's gonna be a recall. Now, see St. Clair finally getting all six grubs. They are in a firm lead here in this early game. Right, and I mean, it's just, again, 
Natty taking the control in these areas. So it is going to be the advantage coming through from St. Clair. Clean start. And now switching over to Ricky, looking to try to get a little bit of aggression on to that tower and top. But so far, St. Clair off to a clean start. And if you're Oklahoma Christian, what would be your next objective, seeing as how this match was swayed so far? Uh, you definitely want to play for the next Dragon S. You don't want St. Clair to be near soul this early. And overall, last time you had a game plan where you could rely on just clearing waves, but now St. Clair is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with clearing waves, especially with Trundle and uh, Sivir here. It's not as a comfortable of a comp as they used to have. Right now, they're just kind of relying on poking your enemy, you know, just being a little bit annoying, but unless you can secure these kills, it's, it's not really worth the pokes. You know, this Wukong, I think, is here to try and get the knockup for these laners, but he's just not able to land them right now, unfortunately. Ricky on the top. Having a little bit of pressure go his way, but the field to try to slow the player, maybe letting Ricky get to a couple of those minions is going to be exactly what happened. So just clearing out that wave there. And, you know, so far, I got to say, I'm thoroughly impressed with how St. Clair is able to just kind of take control in the jungle and just kind of kind of shape this matchup slowly but surely in their favor. They're such, like, you know, for, for as aggressive as they are, they do really have sort of a methodical uh, Ooh, a weird, style. Sorry, a weird push happening up here in the top lane. Trundle getting caught off guard here. And the Wukong gets that knockup, like I said, and secured the kill. That's their MO here with their jungler. But while that's all going on, St. Clair got the second Drake, and now it's going to be Chemtech and Soul going forward. You don't want that on the side of St. Clair. That's going to be a massive especially for the Holy Bear. Sorry to interrupt you as you were saying. No, 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 please go <laughs> ahead because, you know, if I wasn't on my stint there, I would have done exactly as you just did uh, because Ricky just got jumped by three guys, but it had to be done because if you're on the side of a... It was only two shit, guys. It was, it was only two. Wukong could split into oh, two sorry, guys. Oh, sorry, so, sorry, sorry, <laughs> but, so sorry. So you're kind of right, half yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Half, half right, half right, half right. But the point is, we'll say two and a half men and call it even, but what I will, uh, what I will say is, um, you know, you got to make a comment on that and you got to assume that was kind of a homeless Christian way of saying like, okay, you know what? We're not going to get this Drake regardless. So let's just try to see if we can kind of make an aggressive play up top, try to find a pick, just to kind of get a little something uh, to boot before giving up this Drake to St. Clair. And as you can see, the bounties are racking up on the side of the Saints. Like even the Sivir, no zero, zero, zero across the board, but still having a 150 gold bounty just from CS alone. And look at you that, the kill in the bot lane. Just clean, that was just a clean kill. Right, I mean, clean take, no losses, barely even health loss as well. I mean, it was just so simple from St. Clair. They see the opening, they're able to take over. Maddie getting really aggressive, and he is on a killing spree. As you see, he takes the next pick as well. Beautiful play from St. Clair, just giving clear comms. They know what they see. They have the picks lined up, and they knock them down. Exactly, as you said, and once again, seeing the brawl up in top lane, and unfortunately, well, Ricky gonna is going to have, have it happen again. Back to back, there's nothing he can really do about that. You know, he's pressured by the Olaf, and he's like, I gotta take the fight, it's under tower, I'm safe. And then, just from out of nowhere, from the back line, the Wukong goes in, knocks him up. It's just getting them those consistent kills, and that's what's holding them in this game right now. As a Maddie, well, he's busy getting these objectives, he hasn't been able to help his team get any further kills so far. Now we're seeing the first tower be taken down in favor of Oklahoma Christian. But I think nice simultaneously the Saints also got a tower inside of Oklahoma Christian. So it's one and one of on the towers. But the rift is gonna go over. Yeah, they're gonna have the Herald on the side. Right, I mean, well played from Oklahoma. You know, to think in the starting game now, uh, again, that rift herald gonna be a quick, you know, you gotta assume that it's going to be a quick uh, 
engagement onto another tower for uh, Oklahoma. So they've set themselves up nicely here, as nice as you could given the early start to St. Clair. So, you know, as we get into just under five minutes left on the Baron, oh, we do see that Ricky gets jumped yet again. How many times is it going to happen to you, man? This is just ridiculous, but at the end of the day, sometimes you need to stay, take one step backwards if you want to take two steps forward. So oh, there's there's the push that comes in from the support. There it is. They're going in from the jungler as well. We're seeing actually four people be committed in this top lane, but unable to get a kill. They just want to try and take this tower down. But maybe now, where are they going? It's I guess they're just rotating back. They'll be playing for a kill, playing for a team fight. Oh, they sense that rift up there. Bakery Boy now gonna have to try and go up against this fed top lane. He's the only other fed person in this game right now. The slam comes out, unable to get the tower itself, but gets it low enough that it's just a few strikes away. And speaking of striking towers, we're seeing down here in the bot lane, this Orianna has rotated down and continues to poke it on. We're seeing lots of rotates all around from all sides. <laughs> Right, I mean, I was going to say, it's, it's, it's bottom lane, and we're seeing Ricky have to kind of be the coverage for that turret or that tower. So it's, you know, it's been a little bit of an interesting starting game from both sides. I mean, would you say it's a lot closer than the first game, or, like, what would you say? Probably not, as we kind of see, like, the gold difference and also just the grubs as well. So you would kind of think that maybe St. Clair have a little bit of an advantage numbers-wise on the paper. Uh, but again, I gotta say, Oklahoma, you know, they answer back by taking that Rift Herald and, you know, taking a tower here and there. You know, you gotta think, it's it's been somewhat good from Oklahoma to at least kind of stay with St. Clair, but they gotta do something big soon or else St. Clair's gonna kind of run away with it as it's trending to. They are looking to end this game early before they can get Soul, before this whole thing runs away with the Saints. Right now, it's relatively even power scaling wise. There's the stun, but the damage from the Olaf is just too much. He's so fed up there in the top lane. It's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Even when he had zero kills or so in the last game, starting it off, just he was still so strong, but now four kills up to start. He's just going to be a force to run and do this thing, and you're unable to stun him. It's see if you and I must add. Look at that, Maddie. even Maddie has to run away and respect this Olaf, but now with Sivir, they might have enough damage to take him down, but the ghosting, too fast, too speedy, and able to get out, and now Oklahoma really getting themselves back in this thing as they get a Drake as well. Right, I mean, so far in the last 30 seconds to the last minute, it's been looking all Oklahoma, but just to boot, it is going to be a turret that St. Clair does end up claiming, so good job to at least kind of be right there but like I said then there's Oklahoma that is working on another one in the bottom lane so you know it, it is what it is St. Clair they're kind of getting you know answered a little more on their aggressions and it's just again looking like it's just kind of a little bit of a close game so far yeah just in the past few minutes last three or so minutes oh, really come back. Oklahoma just came into their own right now, really figured out what they need to do, got a few key picks, and I think what really stole the thunder from St. Clair, I don't mean to put the blame on Ricky, but the Wukong flank twice in a row really got them back into things and got this Olaf fed, and that's what they needed. They needed someone to champion around, and that's gonna be this Olaf, just such a strong tanky champ and able to show the damage as well. As we look over to the bot lane, Trundle, pushing things up. I would say if they can drag things out, get a few more objectives, the Saints will be in a firm lead. But for right now, as the levels are, as the items are, I would say it's Oklahoma Christian, but only by a little bit. They're definitely looking a little bit better here in the team fights. Right, and I mean, so far, you were going to say they're looking a little bit better, but right now, they could not be looking more than worse for wear, as it is going to be the pick that comes through from St. Clair, the shutdown happening as well. St. Clair just with an absolute trouncing so far in this team fight. They're on a killing spree. Bakery Boy doing all he can. They should take the tower as well. And just when you thought it was looking a little bit grim for the side of St. Clair, we knew Oklahoma was kind of clawing their way back into things. St. Clair do a beautiful Beautiful play. Yeah, that was a, definitely a caster curse. They're gonna have to thank me for that one, but I think I was still kind of correct there because 
Oklahoma Christian, they needed to rally behind that Olaf, and that Olaf was up there in the top lane taking a turret. So you have to wager, was giving up those two, three kills worth a turret? Might be for Oklahoma Christian as it allows the Olaf to firmly roam around now that the lane is so pushed up. But overall, don't know if that was the best decision as now St. Clair does have a little bit of a gold lead on them. Brent, I just want to point out, uh, as you know, Baron is here now, so we will get back to that very quickly. That, again, stream commands as well. If you guys don't want to hear me and Matthias break down, you want to just see pure gameplay, exclamation mark streams in chat should bring up those other streams that you can go and see yourself too. But back on to this game now. Baron is on the field, and you got to think, St. Clair looking pretty okay right now but again this all switches and i feel like oklahoma christian might have the control they need to maybe start putting a little bit of damage on they they could they could once again olaf being the star player on oklahoma christian right now they're gonna start baron pretty early to try and force the fight with the saints they're just that confident and Look at that damage just being dished out. Already at half health, the time is ticking. Pop Blossom comes out, they get one stun up top. That might be a kill. The Sivir's trying to get it down, but the Varus takes down Maddie. And that's gonna be Juggler down. Rockboom gets one. He's gonna find more, but without the team to back it up, it's gonna be very tough. Trying to just try and stop this Baron take from happening. Now they get another stun. They're looking to get another Whoa. kill. Turret, turret gets taken down by minions. And now, throw the Chaos Rock Room gets another. And all the while, Trouble's oh. backdooring them. <laughs> Ricky, where were you? I mean, obviously, you know, we saw the sneak going in from Ricky. An extremely aggressive play. It worked. And it worked. They stopped they, Baron. They, just, they stopped Baron. And they take an inhibitor. Brilliant play from the Saints to get a few <laughs> key picks, a few key kills. They take down that Olaf, cash in that big bounty, I'm sure. And now, with an inhib gone, they have a lot more space to roam around. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's a brilliant play. No one saw amazing, that coming. An amazing split push. I, like, I, I am just, <laughs> the fact that Ricky was able to just take that, just free. He really did a great job there of just hiding away. And now as we see Ricky putting some more damage on, it is going to be the pick that he will find. And now, again, I believe it was just another uh, minion, obviously, or a golem, obviously. So just, again, St. Clair getting the pick they need, uh, getting the support they need. They have the inhibitor, and now they are going to try to see if they can for force another fight to eventually take Baron. Yeah, this Baron is going to be where all the brawls are happening. The Rel is going in, but oh, I got faked out by the Nico myself. That was a Nico fake out. And now, once again, they're going for the same strat, having a Ricky. Sure, he's 0-5, but he has more turret kills than he does kills on the board. But that's what you need. You need this Trundle just going in, going whack, 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 bonk, bonk, bonk on these towers. And all the while that's happening, they're also securing another Drake. One point away from Seoul, St. Clair College looking very, very well on these Baron fights every single time. Sure, they're not getting Baron, but it's such a great distraction as Oklahoma can't let them get that as that is gonna spell doom. Right, and it seems like now they're gonna finally go for the engagement on the Baron themselves. Ricky finally getting someone to pay attention to him in the top, but again, I don't know if Oklahoma's aware that I, I think not only is Ricky going to win this fight, but yeah, like St. Clair is taking Baron right now, and unless a fo fight, fight is forced out, it seems like Maddie is just going to be able to just keep on chipping on damage as well as Rock Boom. There goes the engagement from the Wukong, but he's, he's going to get stunned steal. out, and now it's just going to be St. Clair all over the place. They have Baron, and now it's a race to see if they can kill EMPs, and they're going to do just that. The double kill coming out. St. <laughs> Clair looking again. good. And look at Ricky <laughs> go. He is just absolutely in the back line. He takes yet another turret. <laughs> He's going to take a second one as well. Are you kidding me, Ricky? Go absolutely bonkers. They're trying to take down the Nexus. Can they 
just do this immediately? No shot! Don't tell me it's all she wrote! And it <laughs> is going to be all she wrote! Are you kidding me? Ricky, you are absolutely insane! And a 2-0, that wins them the series. Saints getting the flawless regular season playoff, getting the bye in the playoffs. And overall, amazing plays all around. Oklahoma Christian taking their first loss right there. And speaking of taking first losses, St. Clair College versus Ashland University. This one is a playoff. And they are certainly playing off right now as they're off of the point right now. Oh, Ashland University in control. And would you like to run through the comp or would you like to just focus on this action? I don't think there's time to run through the comp. Two Kitsune Rush is going down right now and the Orisa has to try to go into the gold mode to try to force things out. It is going to be an absolute wipe though from St. Clair. Redex, Razor, Emerin, Noxious, all putting picks on the board. They were at 92, it's gonna build. It should be St. Clair with the first point. What a chaotic opening, but just as quick as we switch over, St. Clair College gets their first point on map one. And to be honest, it wasn't looking very good. We saw kind of in the alt economy, like Ashland had a Kitsune in the back pocket, but St. Clair really had to build their last second to get theirs. They're able to do so. They make a brilliant play. And if they didn't take that team fight and make it their own there, that would have been the point because you're up to around 80% now. You get that first pick off the board on the side of Ashland and Ashland might have been able to hold. So a beautiful play from St. Clair College. And right now it seems like they have, uh, you know, the advantage so far in, in this game. It seems like they had a probably an early, if I had to predict an early take, had that early control, was taken back by Ashland, and then the retake comes through. But now on the Lijong Tower, it's going to be interesting to see what the lineups are. It's going to be the Ramatra, the uh, Kiriko, the Tracer, Sojourn, and Lucio coming out from St. Clair. And it's going to be a literal copycat lineup as well from Ashland, sticking to the meta. However, they bring in the Orisa for a changeup onto the tank. Basuki trying to get a little bit jiggy with it, but he needs to try to recall to gain some of that health back. It is just the team fight going through. Interesting to see what the first pick's going to be. Tread low health. The health will have to come in from his supports. They do a good job of getting him back up to speed. An amazing job right now, but the point is being contested for of St. Clair against the one tank of Ashland here. Looks like Tread is going to go on the offensive on the Ramon there, going punching, punching, punching there. He yep. gets two there with Noxious, and then now they're just sweeping through once again, getting a team kill to start things off as they ended the last one. You Eight. can't, I was going to say, you can't write it any better, right? <laughs> I mean, Noxious with the first pick, he uses the snare to lure the player in. St. Clair pushes them back into that snare from the Sojourn. It's a beautiful take from St. Clair, and they're able to find the team kill, as you're saying. So right now, Ashlyn, you need to try to deal with Tread in the front. He has a lot of things going for him. What's not going to go well for St. Clair, though, is um, the Sojourn on the other side of Ashlyn finding an early pick onto Razor. Yeah, that's not going to go all too great for them. But hey, we see oh, the overclock man. come up from Noxious. He gets one, he gets two, looking for a third on the flank, and he finds <laughs> it at the last second. And now it's all just the tank remaining on the side of Ashland. And he takes him down as well with Amarin helping that one out. And with the grenade holding them all off the board, St. Clair about to breach the 50% mark. And Ashland is stuck in their spawn. Right, I mean, Noxious is just such a dominant player right now. Let's take a look at the alts, though, as they do come in. Ashland, they have an Orisa ult, the Pulse Bomb, and the Beat to work off of to try to counter this Annihilation. But again, when it is aided by a Katsune Rush, if the combo comes in, it will be hard to stop the Katsune Rush. And now the Beat goes down on the side of Ashland to try to counter punch the Katsune Rush. It is going to be the Beat from Redex as well, just to kind of keep St. Clair alive here. It is going to be Emerin to fall, though. Razor with a pick onto the Kiriko of his own. Pulse Bomb ready in hand. Is it even worth the usage right now? Yep, gets the stick, gets the kill. And that is going to be both tanks down from both sides. It's going to be a scrappy finish to see who takes point control. But it seems like Emerin, Razor, they're just too good. They're holding this perfectly. And it is going to be the 2v1 onto the Lucio to keep control, keep map advantage, keep the percentage building. And now it is going to have to be an absolute dive if Ashley even wants a chance at getting back to this point. And what a close game that
that first one was, but St. Clair already at 99 on the board. It's overtime. Ashland needs to go, go, go. They have the Orisa ult, and it looks like they're going to plan to use it here. The Doomfist from Tread comes out. They commit the ult to him. They're going to want to take that down, but they don't do it as Tread gets a kill. Noxious gets another. The support is down. Only one more remaining. He takes him down. It's just the tank left in tow, and now St. Clair for, I want to say, like the fourth time has successfully dismantled Ashland University time after time, and that is game one going over to them in the series. It's too easy out here. It's too <laughs> easy out here. Listen, you don't want to be disrespectful, obviously, but St. Clair, they make Ashland <laughs> look like... Is this still, sorry, is this still the <laughs> April Fool's food. update? And this is the April Fool's update. So you will see that all the characters have googly eyes. But let's look at this play of the game. It is going to be from the Sojourn of Ashland, doing a very good job on the overclock, finding one, finding two, finding three. And it was just a really good job from St. Clair, though. So yes, Ashen does get the play of the game, but that doesn't really matter in the long run because Sinclair get the first map to go in their favor, and it was just so dominant. Yeah, well, it was close there when we tuned in. Uh, uh, Ashland had control of the point. Sure, the Saints had, I think, like 80% on the board, but Ashland was like 95 and climbing, right? Saints just won that one decisive fight and then carried the mo that momentum all the way into the second game. It seems like they just figured out how Ashland plays on that map and they knew how to maneuver around, get around to their backline, take every little backline out, then just take down the tank. That's the game plan in most Overwatch games, but they figured out how to execute it every single time. Right, and I mean, again, the thing that makes this team at St. Clair so different is Tread. On that Doomfist, not a very meta pick, but it is so... He, Tread's just so good on the Doom to isolate the squishies to try to get these first picks, and I mean... Noxious just on the Soge. Unbelievable gameplay. I, there's nothing really to say. Everything was clicking, running so smoothly, like a well-oiled machine. St. Clair make that look absolutely effortless. And, you know, that's kind of that's kind of it for that well, point. I mean, yeah, there's nothing yeah. really to talk about. They took it so quickly, it, it really didn't even feel like we were even there. Yeah, that was... Well, just after League 2, which is such a long form, format of a game... Just seeing an entire uh, first game go by in a blink of a second, that's why it's best of fives. But going back to the game, like you said, Doomfist, very different tank to play around, especially props to Tread, but also props to the team. Because a lot of other tanks, they're more of a shield setter, you know, there's something to rally behind, right? Doofist is kind of just another DPS there up in the front line. Sure, he has a few blocks. He's kind of taking the aggro of them, but he's not really giving support to your teammates like a Junker Queen would or a Reinhardt or a Winston. But he's just up there in the front lines. His support is just taking down these targets. So props to everybody <sighs> on the team for yeah. being able to execute these, these niche plays. No, I mean, a, a beautiful uh, take for, you know... Li Zhang in general, it was an amazing game from the Saints. And we're going to get back, right back to it. But it will have to be after a short break as we get our players back in the lobby for game two. Actually, you know, I thought it was going to be a good break, but it seems that me and you have been able to stall long enough. Hey. So <laughs> we're actually going to be getting right into I'm here game now. Kings and I'm here for it, yeah. Kings Row, again, a very defensive-sided map, as you know, you can sort of recall. Uh, breaking down some of these lineups, it is going to be the BAP that comes in for St. Clair. Sorry, the teams are actually flipped right now. There, there we is. go. Perfect. Great job, bro team. <laughs> and now it is going to be corrected. So we do see the lineup coming in. Emerin on the BAP is kind of the switch up, but again, sort of the same lineup for St. Clair. Tread going on to that Ramatra now. And on the side of Ashland, it seems like they kind of like the lineup that they had last game, but so far it has not paid out well for them as they do lose their support. However, they get the counter punch. Okay, let me shut my mouth real quick because <laughs> Ashton fires right back. Oh, but Tread takes down one and now they're all falling down. Razor gets the tank as well. The push is, or the defense is crumbling now and the Saints secure the payload. Right, I mean, obviously, you know, King's Row again, like I said, defensively sided map, but that point is usually very attacker sided. The problem is then when you're moving that payload, these points are so hard to take. So St. Clair really have to kind of be the difference maker. So far they are though, and we can't really talk down on them because they've just found pick after pick after pick. They're stalling time right now. Ashland look very stagnant, uh, very distant from each other. Yes. And 
you know, St. Clair, again, just picking up right where they left off, as it seems. They should have this first point going smoothly to start, and they're just trying to pin Ashland back in their spawn. Yeah, the synergy on the side of Ashland is a little wanting right now. Just want a little bit more, but there, that's a nice Please pick to start up. things off. Taking down Emmer, and that's a support down. They're going to move in as they know that healing isn't as good now for Scooby. Trying to get some kills on the back line. So we see Revalia leading the charge here, healing up their tank. They have a Katsune rush in the back pocket if they need it. But now Emeryn has a window as well. He's going to try and meet up with his team once again. But Razor gets taken down by memes. So now it's a little bit of a bad position for the Saints as Ashlyn has pushed them out of this first initial choke. They have to make it past this line once again. But wow! Somehow Shred <laughs> and Razor kill the tank and flip things on their head. I did not expect that to happen. And look at that. Tank goes down. Two more go down. And they're just pushing in on through. Razor getting another kill. What is happening here? So I'll tell you, I'll break that down real quick. Baptiste has an ability, guys, for you that don't know, and we call it a lamp, but it's really just this, uh, again, uh, item that he throws down, and it sets up field. immortality. Exactly. So the lamp was not able to be dealt with by Ashland, and Tread was able to just stand in there <laughs> as the Orisa just tried to spear rush him, but nothing was going down. And then the team was able to, off the back of that utility, find the first pick and just absolutely roll. So it's just been an absolutely beautiful play from St. Clair. Ashland trying to answer so back with a Katsune and a beat of their own, trying to counter out the beat of St. Clair that goes down. They will be successful in that. Three picks going the way of them with the two supports and the tank being found out by B1H on the side of Ashland. So, again, very decent counterplay from Ashland, just proving that, you know, even though St. Clair is, was on a little bit of a roll, again, Kings Row defensively sided. As you see this payload go down further and further and further, it's just going to get more difficult. Exactly. And now Saints stopped right before the first checkpoint. This is going to be the hardest push for them now that Ashland has set up here. They're up high, they're down low, they're everywhere you want to go. If we look over at Tread, he does have the Annihilation prepped if he needs to use it here. And now there it is. I think might commit it relatively soon. Razor trying to get in the back line, gets a sticky on the back line, gets a healer down. Memes is going to go down, but now with the Orisa committing all oh this to be Razor. deadly. Razor goes down to the overclock, but there it is. There's the <laughs> Annihilation use, and Red X and Tread are enough to push through to this first checkpoint. Right, I mean, sitting on that right Annihilation, there. Tread, hit an emote, why don't you, real quick, just because it's been so, so effective. You are very efficient right now. Your team's been looking amazing in this attacking push on a map that shouldn't be this easy to attack. The snare goes down, captures, I believe, was the Sojourn inside there. Tread with some early alt feeding, just some alt charge, and it is going to be B1H, though, on the side to pick up the headshot on the Emmer. Now, I want to give the shout out real quick to the Sojourn on the side of Ashland. It's been playing very, very, very good. And uh, so far, definitely been the thing to kind of keep Ashland in this race when it comes to just picking up those frags here and there. But one man cannot run a team. And obviously that hasn't been the side of the story. There are other things that you can get into the interest disease based on what the supports are doing to boost that or, emu or, or enable that uh, fragger. But so far has not been the case. Now, double Katsune Rush going down, the snare coming in from the Sojourn as well. Should fuel Tread forwards, just the snare again from Tread. Gets the stun though on the spear. Noxious finding one, finding two. He's going on an absolute roll right now. Can he find a third? Most likely going to just try to wait and just kind of let this Ooh. play out as it is St. Clair that does have the momentum. All they need to do is keep gathering meters on this payload. Yeah, the back line. Mixing up a little bit, trying to stall it some time, but Noxious and Tread managed to get two down. Now Tread still leading the charge here, unfazed. He's waiting for his team to back him up here, trying to hold as much time as he can around this corner, but now they're gonna go in. Noxious here, death from above, he dives in, he's looking to find a kill, can't find the DPS. Orisa ult gets committed, the sound barrier goes down from the side of the Saints, trying to cancel that one out. The sticky comes out on the Orisa, the Orisa getting very, very low. They managed to get the kill as well. Tread getting a double, Noxious getting two as well. Only one remains to try and prevent the final push but Tread takes him down and now Saints getting a flawless push here they got stopped maybe one or two times so Ashlyn has some big shoes to fill and if it keeps on going like this uh I'm, I'm just gonna say it right now Matthias if it keeps on going like this 
It's going to be a quick day at the office it for could St. Clair. Be. Uh, it needs to be Ashton right now to try to find sort of what can, you know, pick the brain of St. Clair a little bit. What can kind of dismantle them and... So far, there's not really a very good answer for it. They're, at least they haven't found one. There it's so difficult to deal with Tread on the aggressive tank role that he is often playing into the Doomfist. Not this time, but with the Ramatra, of course. The second he switches forms, he can basically do the same thing. Penetrate the back line, try to see if he can find a squishy here or there, and then use the snare, slow down people so he can rotate out, or bait people in for another kill from one of his squishies. So, I do believe, I was going to say, we did have a little technical difficulty. No, no, nothing, nothing too much. I could have actually been wrong. I think we were just waiting for the line to go in so yep. as they do come in here it is going to be sort of the same thing again this meta is very very concrete mm -hmm. and if you shift from it it often leads to a pretty big risk so yes. it's going to be interesting to see now st Clair on the defensive side how well they can hold but they not only took the three points matthias they took it with a minute 49 remaining very very good if you want to think about the fact that it is king's row yeah especially on king's row it's tough to attack but you know when the teams are at this level sometimes it can just look that easy ashlyn though i have to give them props they are experimenting with different ways of attacking sending people on the flank trying to mix things up so maybe we'll eventually find out what makes the saints tick but right now the saints doing a very good job at stalling it out taking the dual here with the Orisa tread almost losing it out and he does take him down he wins it out against the DPS and the support so now the push from Ashland is not gonna go their way this Orisa getting staggered out from the team by quite a bit a lot of time being burned already and the Saints chasing them already back into their spawns yeah I mean this is ridiculous and if you're on the side of Ashland you really need to try to find a pick on to Razor on the Kiriko. If you want to look at the lineups right now, with the healing recent changes that have gone down, this Kiriko is basically the prized possession for any team to take off the board. The second that goes down, especially because of Lucio, yes, movement helps, but if you can't heal back that damage that ultimately gets put out and Lucio doesn't have a beat, it's going to be what needs to happen in order to get into Tread, to get into taking out that tank. But so far, the positioning has been so good from St. Clair. Tread needing to be a little bit careful now. The Suzu does come out to stabilize him just for a bit there as the healing goes down but now Razor putting more pressure onto the enemy Orisa and it is going to be Tread and Emerin to find the picks that are going to jumpstart St. Clair on yet again more time being drained yet again more time being held for this point yeah the time is gonna be the factor here especially on this first point as Ashland's just not gonna be able to make any significant push and Razor getting a sticky Noxious getting kills as well Look at that backline push from Razor. He's not even looking at him. He has, there's so much gunfire coming from every angle. He can't even... He doesn't even have the time to look to his left and take down the tracer. I mean, Ashlyn, they can't even get it out of their spawn. Yes, this Katsune Rush is going to probably be the thing that they rely on off the back of that. But what happens when you get that? What happens after? If you don't find the picks you need off the back of it, if St. Clair can use that beat that they have on the side of Redex to just kind of slow it down and even counter Katsune Rush, it is going to be not there the counter is. that comes down because Emerin is going to use it first. They're just trying to absolutely hold. You have to think that, yep, you gotta think Ashland, they gotta make something work here. The Pulse Bomb not finding anything. Treads on an absolute roll. Emerin, add one to the count. And now, Razor, next will be you. We're playing boxing over here because two <laughs> punches going through. And now St. Clair look absolutely poised to kind of stay composed this last minute. However, I will say, again, you know, King's Row, this point should be heavily attacker sided. Again, not been the case so far, but it is worth bringing up the fact that Ashland has three alts and St. Clair's one. Yeah, they could definitely make a big push here, but with the sound barrier, it's a very good defensive ult that can maybe outlast this one. There's the Katsune Rush on the side of Ashland. They're making their final push right here. They have one minute remaining. They need to take some progress, and as soon, there's the sound barrier from around yep. the corner. It's the entire team anyways, and now there's the Orisa all trying to stop the push here. They should take down Emerin, and now Treads all in his lonesome. I think the Saints might give this point up and try and play for this next choke. 
Well, again, you know, it's like we said, the ults just weren't in favor from St. Clair. And it was good from Ashlyn to notice this. And seeing in the last push, they just wanted to bait out St. Clair's ultimates, thinking St. Clair, you know, was going to waste a little more than they should. And that is what happened. So to be fair to Ashlyn, they did a very good job of just saving their alt economy and making it work in the final moments. But now you only have 245 to make a very long push to this first point. And it is going to be uh, a tough task. But they get the pick on the tread. So this should be free meters, to say the least. Yeah, they should be very good going in here. But overall, if they manage to make this push pretty speedy here, a little bit faster than the Saints, they could be making a very, very good time. But it's all about this next few chokes, this long lane. If the Saints can stop them here, this should be in the bag for them. But they have some alts in their back pockets if they need it. They have nearly four on the board already. Tread leading the charge here. The overclock getting, or that was just the railgun shot on the side of Ashlyn, chunking him down very, very low. And now look at Noxious here trying to pepper them down. Saints are in a good position around the corner. They're making their move. There's the Katsune rush, and now they're making their charge. They're trying to take them all down right now. There's oh, the overclock. Man. Look at that damage, chunking them down one by one. Tread taking, taking down enemy Orisa, and now they're just picking off the back line one by one by one, and that's going to be a team kill going over to St. Clair once again. And like you said, long lane, so they can play the choke, they can play the time. They do commit three alts, or sorry, to I believe two alts there, just to get that push off. But Kitsune Rush and Overclock is such a good combination. And with Ashlyn not having the beat to counter it out, it was just kind of easy pickings for St. Clair there. It's going to be interesting to see how they kind of play around this next hold with the fact that they do have still a Pulse Bomb and an Resolve. Redux almost with the beat as well to possibly counter out this Kitsune rush that Revalia is going to most likely put down on the side of Ashland. Yeah, this is looking relatively good for the Saints. Ashland, only a minute left to make this large push. They're committing the Katsune rush. They have some ults in the bag. The Saints, though, are just waiting on the flank. Noxious going in for the pounce. Looks like they get oh, no. one kill, though, on the Saints. And now, look at that. Three kills going the way of Ashland. This is going to be huge sound barrier as well. The Saints are unable to punish any of these kills. And that's going to be a team kill for Ashland. Beautifully done there. You cannot praise them enough. They end up not only killing Tread, but they made him waste his ult as well. I don't know if it was a misclick, but Tread pressed the, the button. He used his ult, and he basically died almost immediately. So uh, maybe a panic uh, play there from Tread, but either way, not looking good. And this may be the thing that, you know, Ashlyn needed to get some momentum going. It's going to be interesting to see if, you know, Ashlyn can kind of make this push work. Overclock going down right now from B1H. He's going to try to see if he can find the pick, and that is going to be the Orisa ult coming down. The snare, though, Noxious finds one. Tread with another. It is going to be the way of St. Clair so far. Razor, Emerin, they're doing everything they can in their power to halt this push, and they will be successful. What a way to finish it. It looked like Ash finally had a chance to get this point in. If they got that, who knows what happened. But all I know that happened is that the Saints played amazing here, finishing up this game too in a dramatic fashion. Memes. That sound barrier really bopped them a lot of time here. That was key. It put them in that winning position. But the Saints, they were just ready. They rallied and they managed to take it down there before the second point. Yeah, and I mean, again, so well played there from St. Clair. Even when they do give up that point on King's Row, which, you know, at the very end is to be expected, they do hold their alleys well, they do hold their lanes well, and they're able to stay composed, use their alts well, and I think ultimately, you know, counter out everything that uh, Ashland was able to throw at them. So pretty good job there from St. Clair. It's like, again, you, you know, you take a quick and easy uh, dub on King's Row. And now I believe it's most likely going to have to come down to one flashpoint game to see if St. Clair can pull off this sweep to yeah. the playoffs. Already, flashpoint, though, is such a volatile game mode. It can go either way sometimes. But with how things are going, with what we've seen from the Saints so far, you got to be thinking if you're on the side of Ashland, it's got to be really rough on the mental, right? We saw them perform relatively well on that first point, but after it swung the way the Saints, it's been kind of a struggle from then on out. I got to be wondering, maybe it's it's a mental diff at this point, right? 
I mean, it's just so tough. You know, as Ashland, you're going up against St. Clair, which is like your top seed. Uh, I, I, th- I believe so, at least if I'm wrong. It was I, like first or third. Yeah, I was going to say they're, they're definitely high ups. The whole point is. Um, oh, sorry. No, I'd probably be Maryland. That's actually first. I oh, sec- that, second but. or third. Yeah. <laughs> so for sure, though, St. Clair, no team to be messed with. They're an absolutely insane team. Um, and so far, they're proving it right now because they are making Ashland look like baby food so far <laughs> throughout these first two matchups. I hate to say it, yeah. but it is true right now. So if you are Ashland, you need to really kind of revamp your playbook, try to find something to work out here. And it is no surprise to see a little more of an aggressive lineup, more of a dive lineup coming into Flashpoint, a lot more oriented on the movement. So we see Basuki bringing out the Genji, gonna see how that works out and tread on someone who we don't usually see very much of, but on Flashpoint, depending on what it looks like, it could come out of use as we do see the Sigma. So a little bit of an unusual play there, most likely trying to just help Noxious, applying those shields just to let him have those long sight lines with that railgun. So again, it's probably going to be the play there from St. Clair, and that's going to be the plan. But so far, Bazuki taking out one with a dash, has the pick on two. Oh, well, sorry, I was going to say wow. had the pick on a trade. He looked worse for wear, but it is going to be an absolute 180 on the side of St. Clair. They pick up the picks they need, and even with Redux going down, it's a little yeah, too little too late. You should sort of see St. Clair start to kind of maybe take this point. Just I say that, though, yeah, actually, Ashland's actually. counter back beautifully. And Ashland has control of the point right now. They're already a quarter through. Saints kind of scrambling here, trying to take control, trying to get any edge that they can. Sure, they can go toe to toe in the kills, but they're just unable to take some ground. But right as I say that, they're trying to make their push right now. Putting the tank right there in the thick of it. He's trying his darndest to stay alive, but the sustain is not going to last long enough against this Arisa. The Arisa's just dissing, dishing out so much damage as we turn over to Emerin down the Kitsune Rush, trying to turn the tides of battle. And now Vasuki in a duel with the DPS, wow. doesn't quite get in. Reddick sits a kill as well on the tank. And now things are going St. Clair's way. They take control of the point at 70% from Ashton. It's looking very, very dicey for this first point. Right, I mean, you know, it's a matter of anyone can take it because right now Ashland can just kind of feed into their ults. They do have a lot of them that will be going onto the table. And, you know, St. Clair, they're going to be without the Kitsune Rush for a little while. So as this next push comes through, you have to think that you got to use the ults from St. Clair. Beat coming down will probably most likely cancel out the Sigma ult from Tread. It's going to be exactly what happens. But now, what do you do after that? You have to kind of just stick in this stalemate. It's a little bit awkward. Beat coming through from St. Clair as well, just to help the Kiriko on this fight with the Genji but the Tracer comes through, finds the pick. It is going to be nauseous to go down as well. Tread kills himself, and Redex is going to get finished off wow. as well. Beautiful play from Ashland, and assuming St. Clair can kind of get a massive sort of push to come through, which they don't have the ult economy for, you gotta think that Ashland's just going to quickly take this point. St. Clair probably gonna opt for a little more of a reposition on that next flash point, and we see the switch in the lineup as well. A Tread going switch. with the Doom Fist, Emeryn going with the Moira, and Noxious on the side of the Cassidy. Yeah, a big switch up on the side of that team. It looks like they're gonna test it out a little bit early here, just trying to contest the point as much as they can. And hey, looks like whoa, this goes working out as Trey gets one, Razor gets another, and now they're pushing them off the point. Sure, it's been contested, but it's at 99. It's not at 100 just yet. Emmerich finding a one through all the chaos, and now they just gotta take this tank down, and they managed to do it. And now the Saints have flipped the point at 99. You rarely see it in Flashpoint, but now they've taken control, putting Ashland in a reverse situation. Are you kidding me? I mean, the Cassidy does exactly what you need to do there. A beautiful matchup on the Orisa because he can just fan the hammer, roll, fan again, and then even then, the Mechnade as well. Such fast damage that you can put down. It seemed like just a switch. St. Clair just kind of had the intel on what they needed to switch up there to make it work. And now we see St. Clair with a little bit of uh, congestion on the board. Ashland, they have to try to make a play, but their Lucio's gone, so the movement's not going to happen. Mechnade coming out, fan, high noon, going down as well. Well, this should make Ashland have to move off the point. The and even if he gets stunned, though, the High Noon made Ashland run off the point. So they can't contest it anymore. It will come through once more from B1H on the Tracer, trying to do as much as he can. The Zarya, though, on the side of Tread will pick it up. And St. Clair take a flash point that they should have had no business in holding. <laughs> That was ridiculous. That was some great play, gameplay from the Saints. The switch up 
was what they needed. I don't even think they are planning on taking that point. They just said, hey, let's try the new combo. Let's get a good feel for it. But through sheer determination and willpower, they just kept going at it. And they got it. They got that point. And now they're in the lead here on the flashpoint, looking very, very good. Now we have a switch up on the side of Ashland Chance. Going to go for the Ramatra. Interesting pick, trying to counter out this Zarya. Now, the point though, the initial control is going to be going over to the Saints. The Kiriko ult from Ashland going to go out though. Now the DPS is looking crazy from the side of St. Clair. The Coalescence is doing work and Tread and Amarin just cleaning everybody up. Yeah, I mean, you could not write it any better on paper. That is the immediate best start that you can ask for if you're St. Clair. I want to say right now, this is going to be a, a little tough because when you have a player of the caliber of Noxious on the Cassidy, the guy doesn't miss. So it's so <laughs> tough, especially when you try to bring pressure on him as a tank. Cassidy is such a good DPS that can melt through tanks very quickly with those two fans that he can get from the roll and the mech nade, let alone the fact that his, his primary fire just does a lot of damage anyway, especially when you can hit the headshots like Noxious is no stranger to. So again, very tough right now, but he is the person who Ashlyn need to deal with. The grab surge going down, and it is going to be the thing to try to see if St. Clair can capitalize on it. High noon as well, available for Noxious. Most likely going to hold on to it. A beautiful flick to take out the Tracer, using the high noon to try to get oh. some quick damage onto the tank. Finds the pick as well, get the third. It is going to be Tread to clean up and do the rest. But off the back of Noxious and Tread on a beautiful play, St. Clair keep control yet again, and they take their next flashpoint. And unfortunately for Ashton, they were unable to get even a single percentage on that flashpoint. But hey, it's match point for St. Clair and a potentially series point, or it is series point as well. So this could be the last point we see today unless Ashland really digs deep and manages to flip this one. They just might as they get a nice pick from Emerin now. Throwing the nade, doesn't quite land it. Trying to get the long shot though. Has High Noon at the ready. Razor is on the back line with the Pulse Bomb at the ready. He's lurking. It looks like this one is initially gonna go over to Ashland uncontested as that pick on Emerin was massive. Right, and the problem is if St. Clair commit too big of a push to start off, you don't want to give them that sort of like quick jump. You need to try to burn Ashland's ults somewhere around the mid so that they don't have these ults to work off of in the late game. High Noon going down on the side of Vasuki finds a pick, or no, sorry, it was going to be Noxious actually who finds a pick onto B1H. And the High Noon, even though it did move St. Clair to not contest the point, Ashland just didn't get what they wanted off the back of it. The Coalescence to try to counter out the Annihilation, but it's not going to work as Noxious will fall to it. Keeping the tank alive though, this Coalescence is doing such great work to keep the Zarya in the fight, and now the counter punch should come back. This now, Ramatra not looking too good. B1H helping out, able to take down the Lucio, able to now give the support that the tank needs. Tread knows this is a fight that his team will not win. He offs himself, memes with one on the MRN, and St. Clair are going to have to most likely forfeit this first point now to Ashland. Yeah, they don't have any alts in the bag right now to contest this. Ashland played very, very well. Saints unable to get a single percent on the board that time so now Ashlyn looking to make a little bit of a comeback but still their backs are up against the wall they can't lose a single point now they need to continue to play this well this is the playoffs you don't want to be out this early you want to keep on playing here you don't want to lose any games this early on as we move in the Saints looking a little bit worse for wear. They don't have any alls. So they're going to have to worry about this Pulse Bomb. Hello. Could take down one of the key targets. It could be massive for Ashland. Right, I mean, Ashland, you're on match point, series point, playoff point. They're fighting for their season right now. St. Clair doing the same. They want to get up into this bracket. So you have to think right now, it is going to be any, stra any you know, pocket strats that you have, you put them down if you're Ashland. Razor finding one though with the stick onto Vasuki. B1H finding one onto Rezex. He's been playing so good for Ashland, but right now his team is falling by the wayside. Tread and Noxious with one apiece as well. It's going to most likely be a little bit of a stall out here from Ashland. 
Ashlyn before Noxious does no longer want to delay the inevitable. He finds the last two. They have the control. He's on fire, and he's just... And he's been the clear-cut difference maker for the side of St. Clair. Bad Cassidy swap has just been clutch all throughout this match. It looks very shaky at the start, but the Saints have taken control right back in their hands once again. Suzuki also going for the Cassidy as well. That seems to be the hero that is shining today. I'd love to see him. He's one of my favorites. But going back to the game, Saints about to break that 50% mark, and they have two alts to boot, both support alts. Very, very strong coalescence and the sound barrier ready to protect the team. Double coalescence going out. There it is. There's the coalescence, and there is. They just burned three alts immediately. I mean, St. Clair just threw everything onto the table. The annihilation, the pulse bomb, the beat coming through as well. Tread with two, Razor with one. This could potentially be it for the playoffs for Ashland. They now lose almost everybody. It comes down to just one. It seems like that might be all she wrote. And with that final take, with all the alts going down, it's going to be. St. Clair taking the dub, St. Clair taking the series, and St. Clair taking the playoff matchup. And what an amazing showcase from the Saints as well. Just a complete sweep to bring, to start things off. And Emery, I think I remember this coalescence. Is this the one in the Kitsune rush? Yes, it was. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, for, for right reason, he was just able to keep everybody alive, find basically three kills, even though he's not on the board there. He was doing most of the damage. Finds yet another one onto the, uh, the Tracer. This team never ceases to amaze me through losing, through winning. You got to give a shout out to the boys. I mean... I they just, look, there was no way they were able to deal with anyone. Not, let alone, I mean, Noxious. I mean, uh, you know, it is true. You, yes, Noxious is a superstar in his own right. And he is just, he changes <laughs> the way the game is played. Everyone always gets in the server and they're like, we got to deal with him, right? Yep. <laughs> but it's so easy to sometimes overlook the other players that we have. The great players like Emeryn, Tread doing so well as, as well, you know. Our supports are so just solid as well. Red X, right. So... It is so tough playing against these Saints, and I mean, they just proved why, because they made that look absolutely effortless. Without further ado, let's go over a little bit of a recap. Yeah, starting off with a League of Legends, things were looking a little bit dicey against Oklahoma Christian in that first game. It was very punch, counterpunch was the word we used, and that was the best way to describe it. Very back and forth. And then to start things off in the second game, it was also a little bit dicey to start as well, but the Saints won both of those games with a decisive finish, winning it their first one and breaking the flawless streak of Oklahoma Christian and continuing their own flawless streak of their own. So that was an amazing game to witness. Second game today didn't end up happening. FF win, but we'll move on past that to our Overwatch game. That was supposed to be the second, but the only Overwatch game we had here today. And we just saw that one. And that one was amazing, wasn't it? What was your yeah, favorite moment? I mean, <laughs> my favorite moment there... Uh, Actually, okay, I'm going to say it right now. Yes, I'm not a league person, but my favorite moment in this entire stream today was definitely Ricky on the split push. Oh, yeah. Able to just completely <laughs> like rob. Like three times. Like three times. I mean, that was absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. You don't need to be an insane league fan to know that that was just something that you almost never see. No. So, it, it, I mean, a one-of-a-kind play. That has to definitely be the moment of, of uh, you know tonight's performances, but... I mean, St. Clair, they made everything look easy for all ends. I thought it was going to be a little more of a closer matchup versus Oklahoma Christian, but our Saints just, you know, they finished the season flawless. They go 7-0. They lock that first seed in for their next playoffs on the side of league. And then on the side of Overwatch, we move up in the bracket on our varsity side and our academy side. Shout out to the VO and the boys yeah. for, you know, <laughs> flawless, uh, victory. Fall, flawless victory. Yeah, we'll go ahead and say that. But um, another big shout out, of course, uh, to all the players who play and give us such amazing games. Shout out to to the people in the back room, I believe it is uh, Dan, Mr. Banners, and uh, obviously uh, Amanda, Tommy, I, uh, TJ, who was our uh, TJ, who was our observer. Mm -hmm. He is the best of the best when it comes to Overwatch, uh, at least in my eyes uh, for right now. I only laughed because the uh, first one was the FF. He's the one with the curse. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But he's, other he's than that, the he's the best. But other than that, uh, we do love him. He's, he puts on such amazing games, so entertaining. It makes it really easy mm -hmm. for us as Talkman to do our job effectively, hype, and well. And make sure to follow our socials as well to stay up to date on all things Saint related, Saints related events, streams, new games, especially in the playoff seasons. You want to keep up with that. And speaking of playoffs, 
tomorrow at I believe 7 or 8 30 p.m we're gonna have Call of Duty and Valorant so make sure to tune in for that you don't want to miss it and once again thank you to our sponsors Tim Hortons HyperX Subway St. Clair SRC in the St. Clair College Alumni Association and thank you to viewers at home for joining us here for another Saints stream come back tomorrow to witness a more great gameplay thank you very much for watching we'll see you soon